Because there's a hookup there. There's a divine flow there. When I lay my hands on somebody and they're receiving and they just know how to receive food, it just goes to another level. Lay my hands on somebody who doesn't know how to receive. And so somebody said, why is that? I don't know. I'm talking to the Lord. He and he alone knows. I don't know. <laughs> I just know the effects. Condemnation is a terrible realm to live in. Uh, Self-interest is a terrible realm to live in. Just surrender your life and go to heaven. Just surrender your life and go to heaven. Don't be sad. Surrender your life. You're on the front row. Don't be sad. Surrender your life and go to heaven. Hallelujah. Just learn to live in love like an ocean, joy like a fountain, peace like a river. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that there's praise in your house of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God, that there's, hallelujah, there's prayer in the house of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mama Manea, Mama Manea, Mama Manea, do Mama Nae she bore Nea Sita, Lura Bagido do Jaya Chisiturite. Oh God, oh God, fill this place with your glory, Father, fill this place with your glory, Lord. We know exactly how you do that. You fill this place with your glory through a bunch of hungry hearts that allow your river to flow out, your presence to flow out. Oh God, we know how you do that. You do that because there's a whole bunch of folks, hallelujah, that love living in this realm of heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we pleading. Oh, God, we crying out, Father, for the great moving of your spirit. Oh, God, like the breaking forth of, of waters. Oh, God, like fire from heaven. Lord, like a rain, like a, rain, a torrential rain. Oh, hallelujah. Ha, ha. Floods. Ha. Floods. Ha, ha. Hallelujah. Floods. Ha, ha. Hallelujah. Ura baba ser de mangalish to pour a night. A flood. Flood, flood, flood from heaven. Jesus. Lord, we pray that every heart that is hurting tonight and every broken heart would be bound up. Father, that, 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 that it would be healed, oh God. Oh, God, in Jesus' mighty name, that there won't be any grieving. There won't be any sorrow and sighing that it flee away. Oh, God, that there be joy unspeakable in your house tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, there'll be gladness, oh, God. There'll be praise. There'll be thanksgiving. Joy and gladness. Praise and thanksgiving. Oh, Lord God, let there be that flowing forth of prophecy where your spirit comes upon all flesh and out of our lives begin to be expressed. Oh, those tongues and interpretation of tongues, that prophecy, that praise, oh God. Oh, those sounds of excitement, those sounds of, uh, of, of, of jubilation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mama Mangea Tananea. Blessed is your name, Lord. Blessed and holy is your name. Arasele Nanamande Limanakaya. Ukurusumba Banda Lebea Tushiparanori. Oh, Ramama. Father, we pray for your breakthrough. Father God, for every person's life. So everyone knows, Lord, uh, the place where the, where the glory flows out. <laughs> everyone knows where the spout is. Hallelujah. <laughs> It has not even have an on and off. Doesn't even have an on and off. I just always on. Hallelujah. Always wide open. Robo seria. Robo saria. Lubra sororia. Lubo rosoria sarimenda. Oh God, there's no reason for people to live in hell when we can live in heaven. Lord, there's no reason for people to live in torment when we can live. In your, in your wonderful pleasure. <laughs> There's no reason, oh God, for people to live in condemnation when we can live in your peace. Lord, may every head be lifted up. May the 
weak knees be strengthened, O oh God. The feeble knees be strengthened. Oh, rabba ba ba de seya. Oh, rabba ba 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 ha. Oh, rabba ba 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 ha, rabba ha. Ha ha ha. Ah, rabba ha 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 ha. Ah, rabba Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we worship you. Lord Jesus, we bow down. Lord Jesus, we are the sheep of your pasture. Lord Jesus, you are our shepherd. Uh, Lord Jesus, oh, we praise you, Lord, that we may know you like we've never known you before. Oh, God, Father, teach us tonight how to lay hold on the things that you've supplied. Lord, teach us how to lay hold, oh God, on the flowing of the Holy Ghost in a deeper way, on the operation of the manifestation of the Spirit in a, in a, in a, in a greater way. Oh God, on the expressions of the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, oh God, on, and just teach us how to lay hold on interacting with you, God. Where there's nothing can be in the way of interacting with you. There's nothing eclipsing our view of you. We just worshiping you and praising you and loving you. Oh. Let's let let praise, oh God, come forth like a busting forth tonight. Oh God Oh like a breaking forth of our soul break forth oh my soul into joy <laughs> hallelujah say break forth oh my soul into joy hallelujah <laughs> break forth oh my soul into joy <laughs> break forth Break forth, O oh, my soul, in a joy. Oh, remange the bay, kadosa derne. the oppressions of sorrows, the burdens of this world and of this life in the world cannot affect nor touch you. Should you come over here into this place and say, Oh God, take full control of my my life in every way. Zedo zedo borasteri. Oh, remangada shepe and a mongalia pataya. Libera kishere mama and a peste pretea. See coda no pretea satara na neapo. Hallelujah. Let's sing that song a little bit. Eta ramasoto lo de besibre bamanda de bikia la manjana de dea.
time Oh, there's a place of rest I find Where all my burdens I leave behind Oh, in the cross Oh, in the cross Be my glory forever Oh, at my rest Oh, I find This glory flow
of your love Oh God so hungry Oh Lord so thirsty For a greater expression of your grace Oh God so hungry Oh Lord so thirsty for a greater expression of your presence oh god so hungry oh lord so thirsty for a greater expression of your life oh god so hungry Oh, Lord, so thirsty for a greater expression of your spirit through my life. Oh, Lord, so hungry. Oh, Lord, so thirsty for the things that only you can give. For the things that only you can give. Oh God, so hungry. Oh Lord, so thirsty. For the things that only you can give. For the things that only you can give. Oh God, so hungry. Oh, God, so thirsty for the things that only you can do. For the things that only you can do.
of God. And Dallas and the Lions play, and the uh, the uh, the defensive coach. All they do is just start doing this, and eighty about seventy thousand people begin to scream. Well, I don't know how many of them. You know, the thing holds seventy thousand people. Well, everybody was Dallas football fans begin to scream just because one person did that for a team. Hey, man, I want to be. I wanna, look, I don't want to be the defensive coach for the heavenly team, you know. But Mike, come on, you know. I mean. Come on. Come on. Come on. believe that it makes a difference. I'm telling you, it makes all the difference in heaven and earth. When God's people begin to lift their voice and shout and make a difference, you start living a different life. Hey, I'm telling you right now, you ask, you ask the Dallas football team whether or not it made a difference. In the earthly realm, it makes a difference because there's a reflection of the realms of the spiritual. In the, in the spirit, and that, that's just all over man about a man thing. It's all about a man thing. But, but, but I'm telling you, it's learned from the realms of the spiritual. 
And Father, listen, Papa wants to, Father wants to fill us with his glory. He wants to fill us with his presence. He wants to show forth his mighty signs and wonders, his power, his glory, his lightnings. Hallelujah. His demonstration of his spirit through our lives. I want you to be seated. I'm going to talk to you about, I'm going to talk to you about what you want more than anything else. Just a little. I want to talk to you just about what you want more than anything else. What you want more than anything else is a greater expression of the life of God through you. Amen. That's what you want more than anything else. Yes. What you want, the most glorious thing that exists for possibility for men is to have the expression of the Almighty God through their life. There's absolutely nothing more wonderful. There's absolutely nothing more splendid, no more, nothing more miraculous. It may be hard to comprehend. It may be hard to understand that the majesty and the splendor I mean, when, when, when the Queen of Sheba came and saw Solomon, she fainted. She fainted just seeing just a little fraction of the glory of God manifested through a man. Just a little teeny small smidget. Just a little teeny smackerel. Small little bit of the glory of God manifested through a man named Solomon. And everybody was overwhelmed. They never seen anything such as that. When the Lord Jesus Christ began to live his life in, in the, on the public stage after being about 30 years of age, nobody had ever seen that before. What manner of man is this? Where the heavens are open and God's talking directly right out of heaven, now there seems to be a there seems to be no distinction between the heavenly realm and the earthly realm because somebody stepped into this place who occupies both spaces at one time. The wind and the waves had to obey him. He opened up the eyes of the blind. When he was passing by a funeral, he messed the whole thing up. <laughs> they went from a funeral to a celebration because he raised them from the dead. I'm going to tell you what you want But there's a, there's a price you have to pay to have it What you really want is you want the life of Jesus to be manifested in you And the rules of it and the laws of it And the, and the, and the way of it Is fully laid down for us and described for us <laughs> Hallelujah And it begins with a miracle birth it begins, with this, it begins with this wonderful work of divine grace where God has made it so simple. Somebody said it can't be that easy. It's got to be more complicated than that. If it was more complicated than that, it would, you had glory in it. God has made it to where he gets all the glory. All you and I have to do is receive. There's a realm of faith that you've got to be willing to step into to believe what God has done. <laughs> and I mean, to believe it in the sense that Everybody, in the, everybody on the earth examines it. Every, every, every power that exists except for the, that which is in heaven challenges it. But you're unmovable. You're unshakable. Somebody said to me one time, he said, you really think you're something, don't you? I said, I, I absolutely do. <laughs> Any more questions? You really think you're something special, don't you? I am. I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm an ambassador of Almighty God. I'm here standing in a heavenly realm announcing the things that man cannot find with, uh, with, their, with, their, with their own efforts, that eyes cannot see, ears cannot hear, and hearts cannot understand. You could spend your life in intellectualism and will not even begin to touch it. It'll take you in the opposite direction. You could spend your, your life searching everywhere, studying every religion, and all it will do is confuse you more. But Father is here tonight. Just answer the call. I mean, there's, all, all, there's only one thing that I'm desirous of, one thing that I desire. One thing, I'm hungry and desperate for a great, you guys, you got a challenge on your hands. You're doing a good job. I'm desperate for a greater manifestation of the power of the living God. Hallelujah. Zutona Mangalisha. Mumrisatea. Yeah. Yeah, that one also helps. Believe me. Somebody said, oh, you can't, you can't do that, and you'll kill him. No, my kids are dead. They all alive. They all alive. Hallelujah. 
Abroma se kereish te perenaya, tish te perenikos sholo kuki kena neki shipotone shipati ishipati yononost. Amblepa ane mexisi kutorono ishi. Every masatea, we're here to talk to you about doctrines that are almost are almost alien to the church now. Doctrines like living in divine help, because you live in the overflow of the presence of the of, of the Lord. Doctrines like tongues, interpretations of tongues that are supposed to be going on in the church. Ha, huh? hallelujah. Doctrines like cast out devils, raise the dead, open up the eyes of the blind, interact with the Holy Ghost, be translated from one place to the other. Hallelujah. Build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, religion has tried to steal the things of God, and I'm telling you right now, I'm fighting mad to take it back. You listen to me. Religion tried to steal the things of God's divine glory, and not, not while I'm alive, not while I'm around. I, not, what, not with whatever influence that I got, and I got some. I got some big influence. Hallelujah. I've got Father doing whatever I ask Him. That's some serious influence. If you have somebody of power that will do for you whatever you ask, you got influence. Huh? I'm, I pray in the name of Jesus, such things change. I, I, looked, I watched Chris Christie and some of these other politicians when the Dallas Cowboys finally won. They were all up there hugging each other. A bunch of little baby sissies, all excited about their football team. You know what I'm saying? All these grown men hugging one another. Goodness gracious, give me a break. Turn the camera. Ah, oh, what happens when God's people get so excited about the move of God? Hey, man, what happens when God's people's ex see, their expectation showed up? I saw them all standing there. Now, some of them were meditative. Some of them, they were lot, walk, rock, rocking back and forth like where they were waiting on the Lord. But when their expectation arrived, their expectation caused great joy. Their expectation caused great, great, great celebration. Their expectation caused great excitement. I pray tonight. That God would find in our lives all our hearts being in a place where our expectation is in Him. And it shows. It shows. It shows. People are stuck in the ditch of religion. They're stuck being satisfied with a plethora of different things in this life. Things that they draw identity from. Things that they draw meaning from. Things that they draw, draw value from. They're running around with their report card. Woo! I made a B. <laughs> so B was that way with a C. Ah, I passed. That isn't real. That's stealing away the good things from your heart, man. Your life's too wrapped up in a bunch of nonsense there. You need to get rid of all of that. And then it's worse than A's worse. A's, because more than likely, it's going to go right into the realms of self fortification. And if you want to live the glorious life of Jesus, you're going to have to learn how to deny yourself. Huh? I mean, you know. Yeah, you're going to have to try to get a hold of that. I know there's, I, I know there's, that, that's some strong will. I, I know that's some strong will, but you're going to have to work on that one at home, uh, Jeremy. You might have to, might have to go take her, give her a break. Yeah, you, you had to give her a break, Bubba. That's, that's some fighting, that's some fighting self-will. Now, let me just tell you about that. That's going on in your life as well. It's just refined. It's done in manners that everybody can kind of, kind of get along with. <laughs> so long as things don't get too escalated and too out of hand. Father's looking for you and I to turn our will over to him. That is tough. That is difficult because we're so secure doing our, we're so comfortable being in control. Well, that's a falsehood. You're not really in control. If you were in control, my goodness, right you now, you'd have everything you want. You would if you were in control. Yeah, you'd be happy, wouldn't have any sorrow. You'd be wealthy, wouldn't have any bills. God, go on. You're not in control. But there's a false sense of being in control where you're, where you're saying, well, I'm making my own decisions. Well, bless your heart. You need to quit that. Because most of those are already wrong before you ever even got started. That is a great insight to recognize more than likely when I make a decision, it's going to be wrong. I know you didn't learn that in school because you cheated. What you did was you read a book, 
You memorized the information, and then you knew exactly what was going to be on the test to give the right answer. Huh? All that is is just, that's not, that, you know, come on, that's not wisdom. Huh? That's not wisdom. That's memory. The rest of life, you don't get to read the book. Now wisdom's got to kick in. Now you're going to make a decision. And if you could understand that more than likely, 99% of the time, well, go ahead a little bit, 99.99, no, 90.99999, 90 well, 100% of the time, <laughs> I'm going to leave a little fraction for everybody who doesn't believe in 100%. That does exist, by the way. Even though they tell you in engineering or wherever it doesn't, you're going to make the wrong decision. It ain't going to work out for you. It's going to blow up your face. It's going to look like you're on the right path. You're going to start recognizing, hey, I, yeah, you know, that's, that's on the map. Oh, yeah, that scenery is on the map, too. I think we're in the right place. And you're going to find out, no, 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 you're in the wrong place. God, the Holy Spirit, has come to lead us and to guide us in all truth. And this, we're going to have to shut down here because we got a wrong impression of it. We got, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, this is a hard thing for you to imagine, but you got a wrong impression of what God wants to do with your life. And it should be evident by now, seeing as you don't have the fruits to testify of his life. Are you with me? Yes. should be evident now, seeing as you're not getting all that God says you're supposed to have. Hello. Seeing as he says he's ordained us and elected us, called us, chose us, so that whatever we ask him, he would do it, and that ain't been working out. Hello. Why don't we just shut down now and say, well, look, let's redefine this. Let's understand the reality of how God wants to teach us how to deny ourselves. How to take up our cross and follow him. And, and really, the cross is all about not doing our own will. Laying our life down to do what Father has commanded us to do. That's difficult. You don't want to do that. You might as well just go ahead and say, I don't want to do that. And then, then maybe, maybe having really come to terms with that and getting out of the denial, you can leave Egypt. The denial will open up for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you will cross over on dry land. Hallelujah. <laughs> and really what we've, what we've really got to do is we've got, to come to, we've got to come to terms with some really basic things. Because I'm telling you, what you want more than anything else is the life of Jesus to be revealed in you. What you want more than anything else is for the expressions of God's divine power and glory to be manifested. All you want to do is go to another level of expression of his divine person being manifested through your life. There's nothing more beautiful, nothing more splendid, nothing more wonderful, nothing more needful for this world, nothing more, nothing more effective. That's what we want. That's why we're here tonight. We just want to... We, I, I pray, I'm asking God to cause a spirit of wisdom and revelation to come. I'm asking Father in His mercy to move in such a way that every person in this place can take hold of a greater dimension of His glory and of His presence and of His person and of His power being revealed in their lives and through their lives. And Father has laid out for us very clearly what we've got to do for that to happen. If we were here tonight and we're just having a brainstorming session, I put up a little, you know, I put up a little uh, dry erase board or something. We just all start coming up with some ideas. Take the top ten and start working on them. About what we got to do in order to be able to have the life of Christ be revealed in our lives. But we don't have to do that. Father's already done all the brainstorming for us. He's already written out the description of it. He sent the Holy Spirit. <laughs> He said, I got many things to say to you. You can't receive them. You can't know them. You can't understand them. Father makes a simple call. He says, come and dwell in me. This is Jesus. He's making the whole, he's making the final call. He's making the declaration of the organization, uh, the organism of the church. He says, come dwell in me. And I say, Lord, cause that to become practical for me. Cause that become real measurable for me. Cause that to become something that I can clearly understand how to put into practice. And he lays it all out there. He says, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And he's going to come upon you. And, and he's going to overwhelm you. And I'm telling you right now, when you look in the Old Testament, when this Holy Ghost came upon Saul, he knew it. He knew it. There was some serious expressions. I mean, he just began to prophesy and jump around and dance and act like a wild man filled with a whole bunch of good stuff going on the inside. It's pretty radical, huh? That's how God makes a king. That's how God makes a person to rule in his stead. 
He fills them up with His glory. And what happens is you begin to experience such joy that you've never understood. It causes you to act like you've never acted. You might not realize this, but what Father says is the best thing He's got for you when He can, it all comes to an end, and He's going to tell you that here it is, the grand prize. Here it is. Enter into the joy. I believe people are going to stand there with a blank face. But reality of it is, dear people, there's nothing greater. There's nothing wonderful, more wonderful than the joy of the Lord. It's his joy. He's happy all the time. He's never had a sad day. He, he get, he, the Lord, if the Lord looks on sin and iniquity and people oppressing and uh, abusing one another and living in hate and strife and envy and all the rest of the mess and the ugliness and the darkness, and he looks on it, he's going to get angry. His, his wrath is going to burn against it. He's, right, he's going to be fighting mad. He's going to clean the house kind of thing. But he's happy. He's, he's happy all the time. See, it's the joy of the Lord. It's his joy that we get to have. Yes. Hallelujah. It's not the joy that he's made available. It's his joy, his own personal joy. Like his own life that he's made available, that is ours to have. It's his life. He's given it to us to share in it. Father's looking for us to say, okay, then how, how is it that I'm going to begin to cooperate more? The first steps of these things are the principles of righteousness. Father wants us to learn righteousness. You're going to have to be willing to be hungry for righteousness. Well, can I tell you who righteousness is? His name is Jesus. He showed and demonstrated to us all the righteousness of God. So much so that we say that our righteousness is of God, as the Old Testament prophet said. So that Jesus Christ is our righteousness. He showed us righteousness practical righteousness he showed us such submission such obedience such honor of authority he showed us such reverence and respect for that which is sacred and that which is holy and it's something that can only be understood in the context of humility he talked to us about lowliness and meekness. See, humility, true humility is embracing what God says about us and doing what Father's told us to do. True humility is embracing and accepting the identity that we have in God. Somebody said, oh, that's pride. No, it's not. This is what Father says and true humility says, I'm going to do exactly what he says. I'm not doing what I say. I'm going to believe what his report is. I'm going to do it his way. Jesus showed us righteousness. He wants us to come and learn righteousness. He's come to teach us and to lead us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Hallelujah. He's come and established us in a realm where now, it just by the asking, just by the seeking, just by the longing, just by the desiring, we can have the interaction of the kingdom of God so long as we understand the respect and the reverence and the attitude and the disposition it must be in our life. Look at his ministers around him. Look at his ministers around him, and you can begin to understand something about the reverence and the respect. Look at the seraphim. The holy seraphim, the pure and the holy seraphim who covered their face because the holiness is too glorious for them to look. They could look and live, but it's, too, oh, it's just too sacred. It's just too beautiful. It's just, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on now. Oh, it's got to come to another level. He's got to come. Father is gracious. He's merciful. He's loving, full of loving kindness. Father loves loving kindness. He loves judgment. And he loves righteousness. Those are the things that he loves. These are important things to him. And in that loving kindness, which is covenant love, he op opens up to us an opportunity to come and get to know him. But as we get, as we get to know him, as we begin, he's made a way. Even where we can be one with him. But when our hearts and our lives are united together with him, we begin to understand something about him. We begin to understand that something that we, we can't, it's almost like a paradox. How can it be that God is meek and lowly? Jesus said, have you seen me so long and have you not seen the father of Philip? To see me, I testify of the father. Everything that's going on in my life is this is what the father does. This is who he is. To see me is to see the Father in expression, in character, in nature. 
We have been so inundated with the powers of darkness and the pride of this life and the stubbornness and the effects of rebellion and wrong models and wrong parenting. It's all whacked out. It's all messed up. We read the Bible, and it's filtered through our own preferences. It's, it's filtered through our own perceptions. It's filtered through our own experience. It's filtered by theologians. It's filtered by leaders and teachers and guides. You need to erase that. Jesus has called us to come and learn of him. He's come to teach us righteousness. God, the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm going to send you another one that's just like me. He's going to lead you and guide you in all truth. He's going to teach you righteousness. Father is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When we're saying, Lord, I want. Here's the point. Here is the point. The very life of God being expressed to you and me. There's no other point. The very glory of God being expressed to you and me. There's no other point. Hallelujah. And that there are very basic principles to learning righteousness. I'm telling you, God has purposed that you and I learn righteousness. That's what the church is supposed to be all about. Teaching us the ways of Jesus, he is righteousness. Teaching us the ways of the Spirit, that's the ways of righteousness. To live in this beauty and this glory of true holiness, which means that we're living in the presence of God because he alone defines holiness. Holiness is defined by a total separateness, an otherness. Than what exists within the confines of this world. And yet men want to mix. They want to pick and they want to choose. And they want to hybrid things together. Nothing of God hybrids with anything of this world. There's no way to cross pollinate. There's no way to create any kind of a new breed of something. That's half of the things of the spirit of God. And half of the things of the spirit of the world. They can never mix. They can never agree. They as far apart as the east is from the west. They as far apart as darkness is from light. As truth is from lie. All Father's looking for us to do is just settle into a place of hungering, thirsting after righteousness. All he's looking for us to do is to settle into wanting the kingdom of God, wanting the kingdom of heaven more than anything else, saying, Father, <laughs> Holy is your name. Sacred is your name. Sacred is your person. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in this earth, in my life, just like it is in heaven. I want what's going on right now in my life to be exactly what's going on in heaven. I don't want my life defined to me by the circumstances that are around me. I don't want my life to be defined to me by what people are saying about me and the things, whether they're good or whether they're bad or how men credit me or discredit me does not matter. I want my life to be defined by you. And Paul says, you know, of course, when you look in Colossians chapter 3, and, and I'm telling you, this is a breakaway. I'm talking to you about a breakaway here tonight. I'm talking to you about some changes. I mean, you know, a change. The Lord is so good, he's so good to us. He, he, he helps us to understand what it is we're supposed to be asking for. He puts his word in, in our mouth. He puts his desires in our heart. We don't even know what we want. Because we don't even we, we we can't even begin to imagine it. We know we need, but we don't know what we want. <laughs> so he describes it for us. When we see a glimpse of it, when we see the anybody that's been blessed enough to see the movings of God. Anybody who's been blessed enough to have the movings of God in their life. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, it's so majestic. And oh, there's so much more. And so, if we get real, real, real simple and we're, we're, that's all I want. But what happens is we're walking through this life from that moment of that encounter. And we got all the things of this world being sold and, uh, on the, on, on the, at the marketplace. And everywhere we go, there's a marketplace. And they're crying out, oh, don't you want some of this? And, oh, how about some of this? And how about some wealth? And how about some security? And how about some more self-worth? And how about some more meaning? And how about some more earthly and worldly identity? And how about being more popular than anybody else? And all the rest of the stuff. How about being a success in your career? How about doing this and doing that? And what happens is we stop and sample some. Huh? We might even, we might even sign up because you know, Satan and, and the circumstances of this life are very persuasive. They put a lot of pressure on you. 
Did you notice how circumstances of life put a lot of pressure on you? Have you, learned how to, have you learned how to leap over a wall and run through a troop yet? Because when you do, when you do, when you learn how to leap over a wall and run through a troop, nothing can stop you anymore. I mean, you know, Satan's tattoo gets erased from off you. Huh? He can't, he doesn't have any way to pull, your, pull you around by the chains by which, through which he would bind us. Huh? He starts at work. And he has, comes to us and he has nothing in us because he can't make us argue. He can't make us hate. He can't cause us to be in unforgiveness. He can't cause us to participate with the things that belong to his realm. Because we've given ourselves over to the things that belong to the realms of the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, you want to learn righteousness. The Lord says you must, you must, you must deny yourself. You must come. I've got a life for you. He says, what shall it profit a man if he gain this whole world and lose his own life? The Lord makes it very clear to us. He says, if we hold on to our life, we'll lose it. If we lose our life, we'll receive his life. He's got a life in exchange for us. And I want to open up here tonight and, and I, in Colossians chapter 3. And I want to remind you of a couple of things here. I want you to understand you've got to hear what the word of God says to start with. And then you've got to be smart enough, hungry enough, thirsty enough to say, Father, what does that mean? <laughs> How do I put, I want that. How do I put that into practice? And when you begin to do that, the Lord answers you. It is amazing. I have found over and again that all I've had to do is in any given situation, just ask Father. And something immediately happens. That is a Look, everything that goes on in the kingdom of God, everything that God wants to do in your life, has at the very center of it faith. Nothing's going to happen outside of faith. Faith is something that develops through relationship with God because at the foundation of faith is something called trust. You've got to learn how to trust Him. You don't learn how to trust somebody when everything's going good. You learn how to trust somebody when everything is a disaster. Huh. And that don't sound good. That's why I got a couple of grunts and a few yes. And everybody else is in shock therapy. Jesus. Hallelujah. I know you can't say nothing when you're drinking. You know what I'm saying? You ever try to talk while you're drinking? You'll choke. So I'm just going to say, well, they're all drinking here. That's what everybody's in a drinking posture. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to drink deeply of the things of the Spirit tonight because what you want for your life, Father wants it more. What you want is His glory to be manifested in your life. What you want is His presence to be manifested in your life. What you want are the good things that only He has to be revealed in a greater way. That's what you want. That's what all prayers are about. That's what we're seeking God about. We want to know Him. We want to walk with Him. We want to fully take advantage of interaction with Him. We, we like, look, there's not a person on the planet don't like the ideas of visions and dreams. Being caught up in the heaven. Give me a break. Everybody wants to do that. Huh? Everybody wants to do what e Elijah did. Come on. Everybody wants to do what Enoch did. Everybody wants to do what Moses did. That's why still making, they're still making a movie of it. Because it is fantastic. It is amazing. Look at the water. You know, look at the... Uh, I, I hear they did a terrible job on the fire and the manifestation of the Lord. But nonetheless, we can read the real event, the description of the way it took place, and there's nobody in this place that doesn't want that. There's nobody in the world that doesn't want that. And Father's made an open door for us to have that, but He has given to us the privilege of having the full expression of all that He has, but there are rules. There are requirements. They're all conditional. There are things that we've got to be willing to do and obey because God's not going to come down and hang out with you in the bar, so to speak. He's not going to come down and hang out with you in your hate. He's not going to come down and hang out with you in your strife. He's not going to come down and hang out with you in some kind of lust. No. 
He's called us into another place, another realm. And if we're willing to go there, we'll find a land of far greater pleasures than anything Satan has ever come up with. And when you're eating at his eating of the things that he is serving, and if you're enjoying the pleasures that are in his presence, in fact, Satan won't even be able to touch you. So he know, and in, in, in that he knows that, he's constantly doing everything within the strategies that God will allow him, the restraints that he has, because once again, you're not going to be tempted about what you're able to endure able to say no every temptation that you and I ever come up against God has equipped us and given us power to say no he has in fact just morally just the moral culture of men just cast to systems will teach people to say no to the devil but father has now done it in such a way that he doesn't even want us to say as it were out of our own strength, no. He wants to fill us with supernatural power that slays the tens of thousands. The power of the Holy Ghost. He said, having begun in the Holy Ghost, are you now made perfect by the flesh, your own human ability? The answer is, three people got the rest of you failed. It's pass, that was a pass, fail, quiz, pop quiz. <laughs> but we're going to give you another chance to renew yourself, to redeem yourself. Up, coming up a couple times throughout the meeting will be a few more pop quizzes. And we pray that you get the correct answer. Amen. So that you can go step in the master peratai. Be promoted. Amen. Into the realms of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, if Father was to ask me a pop quiz and says, what gives you the right to stand in my presence? I got the right answer. The blood of Jesus. <laughs> He's going to say, you're right. Come over here. I'm ready. I'm ready to give an answer. I've got the right answers. Hallelujah. I have submitted myself to the will of God. I've submitted myself to authorities. I will not break covenant that God has given to me and placed me in. Because God is a covenant-keeping God. He loves loving kindness. That's covenant keeping. God loves mercy. He loves righteousness. He loves judgment. He loves truth. The Holy Spirit has come in and to teach us truth. He says, open up the gates so that the righteous nation that keeps my truth can come on in. You want to come on in, then you're going to have to be willing to be led by the Holy Spirit because he's the only one who can give us access into his presence. So I'm saying, Holy Spirit, where are you at? Get over it. Where? And Father's made it easier than that. Whoo. Ha, ha, ha. He gave us a Holy Ghost detector. Ha, ha. He put the Holy Spirit on the inside of us so that we can hook up with the Holy Ghost at any second, at any moment, no matter where he is in the universe. Ha! And he's right here. He's not going out visiting other planets or other galaxies. Ha, no, 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 no. He's right here. He's come right here because this is what's going on. Somebody said, where's heaven? About cloud level. Somebody said, I can't see it. You don't have an instrument to detect it. It's there nonetheless. And one day, it's just cloaked right now. Can't see it. It's another realm. One day, heaven will snap together. Hallelujah. The heavens will snap together like a scroll. Huh? The things that, that, that has hidden it. Huh? The veil that has been there will snap together like a scroll. And people will be able to look right from earth, right from standing on the earth. And they'll be able to look up at right about cloud level where Jesus disappeared that day in the book of Acts. Or when he disappeared out of their sight. And the angel said, guys, why you stand here gawking? This same Jesus that you have seen go up into heaven shall return in the same manner. Get busy. But keep looking. Keep watching. My eyes are set on heaven. My eyes are set upon the things of the Spirit. I'm going to go to bed tonight hungering and thirsting for righteousness. I'm going to go to bed tonight hungering and thirsting for a greater manifestation of the power of God. When I was thinking about coming to church tonight, all I could think, the reason that I came to church tonight, what drew me into church tonight was the privilege of coming and waiting upon the living God to step into a greater dimension of interaction and authority and expression of His divine power in life as He ministers by His Spirit to me that which opens up my eyes that I might understand. 
that I might know him, that I might cooperate with him, that I might walk in the way that he's walking. Ah, oh, Saponai. I hate demon spirits. I hate sleepiness in the church. It's a foul spirit of hell. It's lukewarmness. It's lethargy. I hate those things that would cause men of God and women of God to be sedate and silent. That's what's, that is what is the attack of Satan to keep the light of God's glory from shining. The lack of the shout, the lack of the passion, the lack of the cry, the lack of the earnestness. The lack of the ferociousness. I mean, it's passion. It's intensity all measured on the scale of expression like rivers. Where do you think these rivers are? What do you think the, 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 the rivers of God are all about? What are they expressed through? Our passions, our emotions. A lot of people saying they got a river. They don't have a squirt. Are you with me? Are you listening to me? Uh, yeah. It's about time people recognize whether you got a river or a squirt and recognize it's time. It's time to get a river. It's time to get real with God. Quit playing pretend. Amen. Amen. Church is going to have to get stirred up to have these things. You got to want the things of God more than anything else, anything else in, the line, in this line. You got to quit drawing meaning and value from the things of this life. How do you ever bring an end to that thing, to that merry-go-round? To that insatiable desire. Oh, you're going to have to have an encounter with God where you begin to seek only those things that are above where all earthly interests lose their value. They lose their meaning. All they are for us to occupy. If I've got a business, if I've got a job, if I've got things that I'm doing uh, that are in this, in this life, it's all about advancing the kingdom of God. It's all about being a part of taking this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, showing forth His glory. What a responsibility. God has called you to show forth his glory. Pretty tall order for us human beings. He's called us to glorify him in our body and in our spirits, which are his. Pretty tall order. Huh? Well, what happens when you are like me and you take that serious? Well, you're going to get desperate. The number one, you're going to get desperate. You're going to quit playing diddle-dally around with religion. Huh? You're going to quit playing religious monopoly. Huh? You're going to quit playing games in Jesus' name. You're going to start crying out to God. You're going to start seeking Him. You're going to start desiring Him. You're going to start saying, Father, all that I want is the things that you have for me. Then when sin and all the other issues come up and all the other things that would try to impose themselves on you that aren't according to the Spirit of the Lord and the mind of Christ, you rise up and say, no, you're my enemy. You're not my friend. I'm not interested in you. Yeah, because you're, because you, you have had the Spirit of the Lord come upon you and you've been seized by the Spirit of grace. Hallelujah. You've been seized by the glory of heaven. <laughs> you have been apprehended by God and brought into a realm where you separated unto Him. Oh, la bose ke pradana say. Mam bringde. What is this? This is revival talk is calling you back unto obedience to God. It's calling you back into living for Him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Huh? It's calling you into a place of hunger and thirsty. I don't have condemnation. I have hunger and thirst. I, I don't live in some kind of, of, of guilt or shame. I live in a place where I've been appointed unto greatness and I'm interested and earnest for it to all start happening right now. I don't... Patience pops. I don't have time for patience. How can you have patience, Lord, when all these things are going down? And yet he's got patience. He's, got every, he's not, in, he not in, a bit, in a bit in a hurry. He's going to make sure it's right. He's going he's to have it done right. Huh? He's going to have the details. All the details are going to be planned out and worked out. Amen. Amen. I, don't like, I don't like it. My wife, she likes to draw everything out. She likes to uh, list everything out. Does it real methodical. I'm already running down the road. You know, I'm already getting it done. But what happens is I get there and she tells me about the 50 things I left behind. So I can't do my work till she got there because she's bringing them. She thought of that. Oh, yeah, I need that. Oh, wow, I need all that. Wow. How, thank you. Huh? And Father's going to make sure that we've got it all right before we begin to start to move forward into any other things that he has for us. There are foundational things in our lives that are going to have to be established. And understand this. 
Unless you believe, surely you will not be established. There are foundational things about what God has done for us, about how he's transformed our lives by the power of the Holy Ghost, making us a new creation, not an old creature while we're trying to be a new one. I, there's not even a model for that in life. I was going to try to think of an example, but there is no example. I know a creature trying to be a new one. What does that look like? You know, such a thing doesn't even exist, but yet it's people exist in the minds of people's religious ideology. Are you a new creation or not? And if your new creation is old things passed away, and if your new creation is old, all things new, and if you're a new creation are all things of God, if you're a new creation, have you been born of the Spirit? If you're a new creation, have you received the glory that comes from the Lord? If you receive the, uh, if you're a new creation, have you received the gift of righteousness so that you can learn to walk in righteousness? Because if you haven't received the gift of righteousness and you don't see that He's made you righteous, there's no way that you can learn it because you're going to try to be, ultimately become worthy enough to be it and to have it. Faith establishes these things, that, these miraculous dimensions of divine power in our life. I hate watching people make wrong decisions. And yet the Lord won't let me say nothing. Because you try to persuade somebody they're making a wrong decision, and all they do is spiral down into a deeper problem. You just have to stand and wait until they beat their head up against the wall hard enough to where they say, well, I'm tired of hurting. i got a big pain. Did you see that right there? How do I get rid of that pain? Oh, well, that's a knot from beating your head up against the wall. <laughs> That's a concussion. I can't, something's wrong with my head. I can't think right anymore. I'm dizzy. Yeah, that's from, that's the result of continually beating your head up against the wall. We just wait. We wait for people to stop running headlong into their own trying to figure it out, their own analysis. Wait, just basically, you know, trying to rely on the things that they've learned out of book, books and through their limited life experience you got to get to a place where you're hungry and you're desperate. And now all of a sudden you come to inquire of the Lord. Hallelujah. And Father never really picked out the, the best and the brightest to make known his wisdom through. He didn't. He picked out farmers, people who run around in camel skin. Wild people, hairy folks. <laughs> they drooled a little bit when they talked. Had spittled and food all over their beard, kind of thing. Well, this is the way the Lord, fishermen. My excuse to clean myself up a little bit. Fishermen, uneducated men, to show forth his glory and his power through. So I said, God didn't call many wise. Huh? You know, he, 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 he called, called those who were simple. God took the foolish things of this world to confound the wisdom of the wise. Because men in his greatest wisdom is foolishness unto God. What does that mean? If you walk in your greatest wisdom, you shall surely fail. That's what that means. If you walk in your greatest wisdom, you shall make the wrong decision. But praise God, the Holy Ghost has come here to lead us and guide us into all truth so we'll make the right decisions. But we've got, there's rules to obeying Him. There's rules to being able to even hear Him. There's rules to even being able to respond to His direction, to His inspiration, to His impulses. God's direction, clearly, clearly, when Elijah stood there at the mouth of the cave on the holy mountain and a great wind came that rent the rocks. Surely it was caused by God, but his voice wasn't revealed in it. And so there was a great wind that came and it brushed the rocks, but the Lord was not in the wind. In other words, you're saying his direction, his revelation of his voice was not in the wind. That was just the exploit of his power, standing all of the exploit of his power. But there's not a direction. His direction is not there in the wind. It's not there in the earthquake. It's not there in the fire. It's there in the still small, still, small voice. And usually what the Lord is saying is, what are you doing now? What are you here? Why are you here? That's what he said to Elijah. What are you doing now? Now what are you doing? Well, Lord, didn't you get the memo? I'm the last guy left for you. I'm the last guy standing for you. Admit, you don't have nobody else but me. Isn't that pretty incredible? How Elijah tries to inform God exactly who's on his side and how many he's got. It's amazing. It's amazing how anointed you can be and still so stupid. 
because it's really, they're not proportional, not even related to each other. You can be a total failure mentally. You can't figure your way, way out of a weight, you know, out of a wet paper bag, and yet God will anoint you and give you wisdom. He'll give you a mouth to speak. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'd rather have a mouth to speak by the Spirit of the Lord than have one brain cell in my head. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd rather have the honor which God gives and have an anointing that commands devils to go to hell. Amen. That causes the yokes to be broken off of people than to have all the degrees that men could entitle me with. Yet people get all so wrapped up in degrees, they become a mental prisoner to the self-interest. A mental prisoner to their own intellect. You have to watch out where you're going to share your relationship with God. Because we read in the Bible and we think, man, it is just terrible how these guys were involved in idols and all the iniquity that is associated with the idols. But there's a lot of other kinds of idolatry that are just the same kind of idols. You better watch yourself. Self-exaltation is the worst kind of idolatry. It's the one that Satan practiced before there was any idol. He, he practiced it's how it all, all came out of self-exaltation. Father wants to teach us the way thereof. Jesus came to show us the way thereof, the path thereof. He showed himself in submission to his parents. He's God Almighty. God manifested in the flesh. Mama says, what are you doing, son? We saw it everywhere for you. Why did you seek everywhere for me? Didn't you know where I would be? I knew where Jesus is. He declared it. He's going to be in his father's house. Not in your living room, in his father's house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha ha. In the father's, this is father's house right here. Everywhere his church is, his father's house. God has moved his temple all over the place now. Amen. He's moved the tabernacle where we can meet with him all over the place. He's made the church fill the whole of the earth. Amen. He established the local church when he did away with the temple where the holies of holies was. He moved the holies of holies right into our hearts. It's amazing. And the scripture says he went home and was in subjection to his parents, to his mother and to his father. And the Lord is silent on it because he was, what happened? He wasn't fully silent on it because what happens is Jesus comes out of 30 years being in submission to his parents, in submission to rabbi, in submission to the elders. The father says, he's perfect. This is my beloved son who did everything exactly right. You can know what a kind of a guy he was. You could know what kind of a man he was. He was the man that expressed every dimension of the righteousness of God, of the humility, of the lowliness, of the meekness, of the submission, of always doing it right, of never making a promise and breaking it, of always doing everything in, in perfect obedience. He is amazing so that he could bring you and I into that righteousness, infer that righteousness upon us, and impart it. Some people want to say, oh, it's just an imputed righteousness. It's not an imputed Holy Ghost. Can you listen to me? It's not an imputed new creation. It's not an imputed new nature. Huh? Oh, if, if the Holy Ghost is not imputed, then neither is righteousness. If the Holy Ghost is real and has been imparted, then righteousness has been imparted. If the life of God has been imparted, not imputed. Come on, listen to me now. The crazy notions that people have and their theological nonsense that they would try to espouse. When the beauty of Father being our Father, He's not imputed Father. We not imputed sons. We not imputed children. We've been born in the Spirit. A real experience. Filled, baptized. So much so that out of our belly flows rivers of the Holy Ghost, the expressions of tongues of fire. Somebody said, ah, oh, the tongue is a great evil, uh, a world of iniquity, set on fire of hell. Yeah, you can have that, but I got one set on fire of heaven and it's full of righteousness and the Word of God is in my mouth and in my heart. Amen. Amen. That's what you want. God wants to train you in it. He gives us righteousness, the gift of righteousness, so that we are able to learn righteousness. You passed high school, qualified you to go into college. You're listening. 
You made it through college and got entrance into graduate school. You did you did you got you had a right to be there to learn. You were you had you were given a right to be there to learn. God has given us a right to be here to learn without any of our efforts, just by our willingness to say, Okay, God, take over my life. And now he says, as many as are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. See, he moves it up another level. He says, as many as believe, those who would receive from him, he gave to them the authority to be sons. Hallelujah. And then he begins to describe it. As many as are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. Amen. That's what it really means. to. Be. That's what it's all about. I have the authority to interact with God. I have the authority to reveal him. I have the, I have the authority to speak upon his behalf. So long as I'm yielded to him. Because I have to tell you right now, I know the difference for when I'm spinning my opinion or when the Holy Spirit's speaking through me. And praise God for such wisdom and praise God for such an experience. I know the difference between the movings of God and my own movings. <laughs> and it's a wonderful revelation to come to because then you can decide whether or not you're going to move with the Holy Ghost. And I, I, made a long, I made a decision a long time ago that it's really easy just to say, I don't know. Somebody asks me something, I say, I don't know. Father, what do you think? And then he doesn't say anything to me. Because there's, I, I, there's things I could do tonight. There's things I could say tonight. And, and immediately I would begin to imp be impacted by a divine reciprocation from that. Especially if I started talking to the Lord about giving me to drink. On a level to where that uh, I would just lose the English language. Because it's a real do spa. Be, I got a big stone. Careful. It's a real experience if I begin to talk about it even in the least little bit of this power and this glory of God. And I love it. I'm telling you right now, it's got a holy emotion with it. It feels so good. I could easily leave off talking to you and go over here into this other realm where it won't be a lot of profit for you, but you can watch me have a fun time with God. You might get excited about it too and start experiencing some of the same. And that's all that's good. Amen, because we love to drink. Praise God, we love to drink. But you need to, get the, you need to get a hold of the authority of the Word, the understanding and the discipline of the Word, the responsibility and the requirement of the Word. Otherwise, you're not going to continue to move forward in God. You're not going to know what the Holy Spirit is doing unless you take in, uh, give attendance unto the Word of God. I believe that people who give themselves to continually reading the Word of God are people who give themselves continually to the rebuke of God, the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Because when we're wanting, we're standing in a position, as I'm talking about tonight, hungry and thirsting, be taught of the Lord, so desperate to have a greater manifestation of His power and glory in every life. We have a hunger to learn righteousness and walk in righteousness. And that is the state of our heart. That's a sincere and right heart towards God. As we read the Bible, I'm telling you, the Scripture le leaps up off of the face uh, off of the page and slaps us across the face. Amen. Amen. And it's a good slap. It's a left a righteous smite me. It shall be a help unto me. I mean, his word burns in the heart. I mean, I, you know, huh? I've read the Bible. Uh, most of my life I've been reading the Bible. I've read the Bible many, many times. And, um, you know, I still, you know, we're reading through the Bible right now. We're, what day, uh, what day is it, day 57? Or 56 right now, something like that, of reading the Bible in a 90-day Genesis to Revelation Bible study. And I'm telling you, there's sometimes I just can't get past a verse of Scripture. It just comes up, leaps up off of the page, and it's just there. And I'm like, I'm trying to read, and I'm still thinking about this verse of Scripture. And now it's like I've got a double mind. I'm thinking about this verse of Scripture, and I'm reading it at the same time, and i got to stop. Because I haven't read, I don't remember a single thing I read. I'm back over here. Hallelujah. So we just got to spend some time there. God says, stop. Stop. You can't say, well, I don't have time, Lord. I'm only reading for an hour today. Because that is all that's going to be is a measure of the lack of hunger. Or the measure that we have an hour's worth of hunger for God. It's better to quantify, to quantitate it. Really, where are you at? I've got an hour's worth of hunger for God. Praise God. Believe him for an hour and a half. I'm believing for a great breakthrough this year to where that God's going to get three days out of the week instead of seven. I mean, instead of two. God's going to, we don't backslide, we don't increase. God's going to. Uh, God, hallelujah. Uh, 
That's a Brahmangeshi Borosaya, Parasirinangeshi. Said, Do you, I said to a person, Do you give the Lord a tenth of your time? They started adding up the number of hours they're in church. Because that's all God gets. They fell short. Well, is it a is it 24 hour period or a wake period? That's like, Do I give, Lord, I honor the Lord with a, a tenth of my gross or of my net? Man, when you break breaking things down like that, you got some serious declarations to you about where your heart is at. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, Papa's made it so simple for us. He came and actually became the living word to testify to us, to show us exactly in living flesh what it means to do this. And says, now come follow me. I love how he then went into that place of submission to God and went over to Brother John, his cousin. Elizabeth was Mary's cousin. And so John and Jesus were cousins. Hmm. And uh, so he went over there to Cousin John's church. He had an outdoor church. They met outside. <laughs> It was a moving church. It was usually always, they always gathered by the water somewhere, by the river somewhere. Because his ministry was all about baptizing people under repentance. Jesus went over there and submitted himself to the ministries that was already raised up by Father. What was he doing? He was honoring the anointing. He was honoring the Father. He recognized a realm of authority. Something that now you have right now. You listen to me. You have every demon power unleashed in your generation in the midst of your culture that runs contrary to such, an, uh, uh, such a disposition and such a, a, a realm of, of, of truth and holiness. Everything is rebellion. Everything is, I don't have to listen. Everything is suspicion. Every man, every man is right in his own minds. It's like, you know, I've said it so many times. You know, there was no king, so every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And I still see that happening right now when there is indeed a king. The king of kings is king right now. He's ruler right now. And yet men still do continue to do those things which are right in their own eyes. There's something going on here that is far more than earthly. It's far more than human. I'm telling you right now, God is in the midst of his church as hard as it is for you to believe. And I tell you, unless you believe, you should never be established. That's just the way it is. Father's doing everything he possibly can do to, con to cause us to believe. He says, you will not believe without miracles. He looks at this Isaiah looking at, a a at Amos saying, whatever it takes, what ask for a sign. You're going to have to, whatever miracle it's going to take to bring you to a place of belief, whatever it's going to take to cause you to understand that this, what I'm saying, is right from God and it's true, we'll do it. Because those things which God has purposed and promised for you will never be a reality to you till you are willing to believe that, thing, that which he has spoken. And you're really willing to have it and it's yours right now, not later. I live in divine health because it's mine right now. Hallelujah. So, Mbronga Satea. Huh? I, 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 I've been up in front of so many people with colds and strep throats and sneezes and whatever else. And they, they're telling me what their problem is and hacking on me and breathing out real strong upon me. Huh? And I'm getting the full titer of everything's in their mouth. But it can't touch me. Sometimes it tries to follow me home and I go, no, you don't belong here. Father, thank you for the anointing. Sickness, go from me. Go for me. I want you to start practicing this. If there's any word that you want to have a hold of in 2015, it's the word participate. Participate with the anointing. Participate with the Holy Ghost. If you want to see the gifts of the Spirit manifest in your life, participate with the expression. Lay your hands on the sick. Give words of knowledge. Participate with the unction of the Holy Ghost. Prophesy. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Kuda stop on the berete. The spirit of the prophet is here. Hala bost fretekina mast. Le membresi tula fora. We were praying over Brad and Margaret the other night in, when we were planting the church and in Bly, Oregon, and you know we did a New Year's service there, and I was up just prophesying over them and 
Ruth Anna came up, basically kind of, I moved right out of the way. She went to prophesying, just right out of heaven. Man, I love that. I, I, all God's people need to learn how to speak by the Spirit. And we're here to train you in that. Those are the expressions of Jesus in your life. That's the expression. Those are the things you want. That's the expression of the life of Christ in your life. These things are easy. It's something that you already possess. It's something that you have. It's something that you learn how to yield to and submit to because you're obeying and honoring all those things that belong to the house of the Lord. Some people are just going to have to renounce wrong models, wrong leadership, wrong parenting. It's really easy when you, listen to me, I want mean, you to hear me, you listen to me very carefully because I'm telling you, I'm talking to you by the Holy Ghost. You're never going to move forward in God unless you're willing to do this because there's wrong models that go on. It's one thing when, you're, when your parents didn't know the Lord, they didn't walk with God, huh? That you didn't even have to, you could just move that on the side and recognize, well, that's not a model. Huh? And now and now and that's not going to be hindrance. But people who are raised in Christian homes with wrong parentings, wrong parenting, wrong Holy Ghost models, wrong Spirit of God models, wrong Christian models, wrong Christ example models, they messed up. You talk about dysfunctional. It's the most dysfunctional expression of anything I know of because it's all crossed up in their spirit. And then they've got to fight that. People, some people are just blessed that they were raised in a heathen home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you right now, the Spirit of God straightens all that out. The Spirit of God, you, you don't have to feel concerned or worried or overwhelmed. Just say, Father God, I lay all that aside. Lord Jesus, I'm going to grab a hold of you. Because really what it is, it isn't about so much the, 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 the wrong model and the experience of it. It's the self-justification. You know what self-righteousness is? It's self-justification. It's righteousness that you convince yourself of. It's self-justification. That's what self-righteousness is. Actually, justification and righteousness, they are synonyms. Self-justification is self-righteousness. I don't want self-righteousness. I don't want self-justification. I want His righteousness, and that is quantifiable. Uh, I can look at you, and I can say, you are wa walking right or walking wrong, and you go, hey, praise God. You want to be taught. Thank you, Pastor, for telling me I'm wrong. You don't start going out of here sulking, saying He don't like me because that is a spirit of rebellion and that pervades it is a, a stronghold over the church right now it's a spiritual wickedness that reigns in the midst of God's people right now you mean when I deal, do some spiritual warfare start dealing with yourself hallelujah amen you need to deal with the devil you need to deal with you and rebellion which is the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness, huh? Which is idolatry. Are you listening to me? Yes. Look, Father's way is easy. Jesus said, My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Why don't we just do that? Why don't we do that? Why, don't, why, why aren't we willing to be transparent? Why aren't we willing to be examined? Huh? Because of the pride of life. We don't want to be examined. We want to hide our transgression. We want to have, we want to have a we want to have a posture or we want to have a reputation or, you know, we want to save face. Forget about that. I want to see his face. Forget about saving face. God's called me to confess my sin and pray over him. He's called me to humble myself under the mighty hand of God. He's called me to get right. If I don't recognize, hey, listen, if I don't recognize I'm wrong, guess what? Everybody else does. Huh? Come on, dear people. If only Father can make us right. Father wants his glory to stand up on the other side of us and shine like a bright light, but we're going to have to get right. We're going to have to understand the basic things concerning his ways. Jesus could have circumvented them. He didn't circumvent one of them. As soon as he submitted himself, at the moment he submitted himself to the ministry of John, at that moment, the heavens were open and God poured the Holy Ghost on him. At that moment, he fulfilled everything. It's done. You know who you are? You know what you're called to be. This is God Almighty. What is he doing? What did you think about what he's doing, man? He's standing in line with a bunch of sinners and prostitutes and rebels and thieves and partiers that have now been stirred by the moving of God because there's nothing, nothing, nothing ever for them in the synagogue and the Pharisees didn't like them anyways, you know, because they didn't dress right, they didn't look right. They were, the, as it were, just the rebel-rousing partiers of... Israel in their day. 
They were the wild bunch in the days of Jesus. And there they are. They moved because they saw they wanted life. People want life. They want the real thing. They want the movings of God. We're sitting around all pie-faced. Are you listening to me? Got nothing. Are you listening to me? I'm sick of this stuff. I'm, not, I'm not at war against it. Somebody says he looks like he's mad. I am. Not at you. I'm mad at, I'm mad at a disposition. I'm mad at a wrong representation. I'm mad at something that's nothing but religion. Has no glory, God, on it. Looks like the shame, the shamelessness huh, of humanity. Are you with me? Oh, mighty God. We're, we're, we're hungry for the glory here tonight. We're hungry for the power. And Jesus is standing there in line with him. He's not going, hey, you know, I'm not. I'm st- I, I've never sinned. I'm the son of God. I just said it here because, you know, that's what I'm supposed to do. And by the way, what have you done wrong? He, he's just standing in line. He's numbered among the transgressors. He's just standing. No one knows he's any different from the, from the prostitute behind him and the party or drunkard in front of him. He's just standing there in line. But the man who's anointed knows who he is. He goes, what on earth are you doing here? Why are you standing in line? I must, we must, ful- we must fulfill all righteousness. Yeah, there, you want all that God has for you? You must be willing to obey what he says. Listen, what, you're in Jeremiah right now. Listen to what the prophet Jeremiah is saying. Listen to the declaration of what God says through Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says to you. And he's calling his people to simply obey his word. Still doing the same thing because that's the only place of safety and protection from the influence of the enemy of your soul. From, for everyone, from the one who is lying in wait to deceive you, to absolutely twist and mar the glory and the image and the beauty of Almighty God that was stamped upon your life. Father's brought us into righteousness and true holiness. Hallelujah. So we can learn to walk in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Ha. So we can start off by believing under righteousness. Hallelujah. It's the resurrected nature. Hallelujah. Huh? He said, if you, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you should be saved. Hallelujah. Huh? And I'm getting ready to read Colossians chapter 3 and really help that um, emphasize that to you. I, I, I have confessed with my mouth and I believe in my heart because God has given me the revelation. Hallelujah. That God raised Jesus from the dead. That he has come up from the dead. That he is the Savior of the world. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You gotta say something. There's gotta be some words coming out of you. It can't be just a little muttering with your head bowed speech. Huh? <laughs> It's a declaration of life and liberation in Jesus' mighty name. And with the heart, I believe unto righteousness. Amen. I believe that this resurrection life, this new life that has been given unto me. I love Zechariah. I love love just thinking about Zechariah and Elizabeth. Zechariah going in there like he's always gone in and he's old man and he's been doing it all of his life. And he goes in to offer the incense upon the altar. But this time God appears to him. Now he's arguing with God, say, I can't have a child, I'm too old. So is Elizabeth. God says, you're not talking no more. For nine months, I don't want to hear another thing you've got to say. Because all you're doing is messing up my miracle with your mouth. Are you listening to me? Can you hear that? I heard God say that to me. All you're doing is messing up my miracle with your mouth. Would you please be quiet now? (laughs) <laughs> Will you start speaking my word? Will you let the word of faith begin to come out of your mouth? If you'll start talking God's word, speaking God's word, and prophesying over yourself, I'm telling you the spirit of the living God will come upon you and you won't have a move of God twice a year. You'll have a move of God twice a day. Amen. Three times a day and more. And I think it's great revival. Somebody just had a move of God first time all year. Oh, well, about this time next year, we'll see him move again. Jesus, help us. That's got to stop, dear people. That's not a river. That's a squirt. Like in squirt gun. You got it? That's a squirt. I'm not having no squirt. I'm not going to be no squirt. Huh? God, look at who God has made us. He's made us in him. Oh, Jesus. He's made us in him. (laughs) 
little moment. He's made, un, he's made him unto us. Our holiness. Somebody tell me, are you holy? Absolutely. He's made unto me holiness. He's given me his holiness. Zechariah then stands there and says, now having been delivered out of the hand of our enemies, we now can serve God, yippee yahoo, in righteousness, hot dog, and holiness all the days of our life. Hot dog. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jack Cole, when Jack, Jack Cole was great signs and wonders and miracle man, and when he got saved and he was filled with the Holy Ghost. He didn't know anything. He'd never been in church. So all he could say is, hot dog. Hot dog. And I look right out to him. It's about what's coming out of your heart. That's the, expre was the expression of excitement that he knew. It isn't about the speech. It isn't about the speech. It isn't about all the things. It's about the anointing. Huh? Oh, it's about the truth of it. Praise God. It's about the truth in the heart. It's about the expression of being excited about Him. Oh, what words do I say? Say the words that you mean the deepest. Well, what prayer do I pray? Pray the prayer that you mean the deepest. Pray what you really believe. Pray what you feel. Pray what you need. Pray what you want. Huh? Pray what's true. That changed the world around you. Mm-mm-mm. Jesus says, come take my yoke upon you. Come take my servitude. Learn how to walk in obedience. Learn how to quit defending yourself and thinking that everybody's picking on you and somebody don't like you, not be treated fair. Learn how to lay down your life. Learn how to be persecuted for righteousness' sake and rejoice in it. I'm telling you, I've got a message right now. You want to be persecuted for righteousness' sake, you just start telling people that God's made you righteous by the Holy Ghost, by the blood of Jesus, the life of Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Ghost. And he's training you and teaching you how to walk in all of his righteousness now that you've been made the righteousness of God in him. There was a righteousness that was revealed by the law and by the prophets, but now the true righteousness of God is revealed and is sitting and living in, on the inside of you because Christ Jesus come live on the inside of you in the spirit of holiness who does righteousness is living on the inside of you and you're learning how to walk in righteousness righteousness every day and you've given yourself to it and don't want to do it any other way you'll get persecuted for that oh there's none righteous no not one because now the light's shining and the light reproves men for their evil and now they hate the light because now if you're saying that you're walking in righteousness and you're learning how to walk in righteousness because you receive the free gift of righteousness and they don't believe any of it and don't want any of it what's happening right now they being made manifest who they are and that is, that's, that's going to that's gonna ruffle some feathers. That's going to that's gonna turn some people against you. It bit us this time. This is what the Lord's calling us to do. And so, I, you know, somebody said to me today, so you know what, I, I'm coming to your meeting, so I'm, I'm going to have to get uh, under armor shoes, wool socks, because the meetings are so long, I freeze to death. You know, I can't make the meetings any shorter. In fact, if it is, I got a re remedy for you. <clears throat> and I, I know my dear friend's probably watching on the web right now. I got a remedy for you. Fire God. Fire of God. Hallelujah. You sit here in the fire of God, you won't be cold one minute, one second. You won't be, hey, listen. The, the men of God in, in former days talk about how they break the ice to go out there and baptize people. And nobody got cold. I mean, you know, this. The generation before us is always bigger and badder and braver. And I've never broken the ice to get people baptized. But I've gone out there and it's been in, in the water. It's cold, but I'm just warm. I'm toasty out there. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Anybody in here, you've, anybody in here, you've given your life to Jesus, but you haven't been baptized in water yet? Anybody here like that? Good. Everybody's been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. That's good because we just believe in baptism. That's what Father told us to do. And we believe in doing it. So now that you know where we're standing, go out there and get a bunch of people that need to be baptized, please. Go do the work of the ministry. And somebody says, how are we going to do that? You're going to pour out love on folks. Talks to y'all Huh? You're not going to pour out your problems on folks. Are you listening to me? No, that happened. Baby, you might not believe it, but it actually happens. It actually happens. It's time to lay down your life. It's time to, it's time to start living a different life. It's time, it's time to stop having a reason to be sad and have a reason rather always to be glad. 
It's time, it's, time, it's time to stop having a reason to be sorrowful and depressed. And, and, and it's time to have a reason to lift up your head for your redemption draws nigh. It's so time to have a reason to, to, to shine and rise and shine with the glory of the very presence of the living God. Just outshine the sun kind of thing, you know. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yes, that's what the Lord does to us. The Lord just gives us an appetite to want to always be in his presence. So we're all bummed out if we don't feel the movings of the Holy Ghost. Anybody else like that? I'm like that. I'm like that. I'm, I'm bummed out if I don't feel the moving of the Holy Ghost. You know what I do? I don't stay bummed out wrong, be, long because I know how to immediately get in. I know how to jump over, and I know how to drink from the rock, Christ Jesus. I know how to speak to the rock and the water flow out, come out. I know how to always be continually filled with the Spirit. That's God's remedy. That's what He tells us to do. And we want to teach you how to do that. We want, to under, we want you to understand this is the year to be, that, that those who are strong in God will do exploits. This year, another dimension of it is going to begin this year. Watch. It's going to be needful. It's going to be necessary. The things are going to be going down in this year. It's going to be needful. It's going to be necessary. I think it's always needful and necessary. But I'm telling you right now, this year brings us one year closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This year brings us one year closer to the great apostasy. This year brings us one day, day closer to the, the, the seven years of great wrath and tribulation that come upon this world. And we know what precedes that, a great apostasy. A great hatred towards God and towards the things of God to where that we are hated of all nations for his name's sake. It's time God's people get over in the fire and stay in the fire of his presence. It's time God's people get baptized with the Holy Ghost and stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Huh? To stay baptized all the time. And I'm, I've never met a person baptized in the Holy Ghost with a sad countenance and a faithless disposition. Huh? And a complaint and a murmur. That's the opposite. You know what goes on, dear people? From the pulpit, we preach faith, and from the pews, doubts are being ministered. If I get rid of everybody ministering doubt to one another, we'd, go, we'd, we'd get some, make some headway. And if it was just neutralized, had a neutralizing effect, that wouldn't be so bad. But it has a backsliding effect. It has an enslaving effect. Some people just be quiet. Stop speaking your own words. Start prophesying over your self and over your life and over other people's lives and start believing the good things that God has said, the good report that he has made. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Rise up from the place that you're living in and now live in a greater dimension of his glory and power. See, he empowers us. You go, and you say, who, me? Yeah, you. Rise up from the place that you're living in right now in the complaint and the murmur and the sickness and the disease and the doubt. Rise up from that place now and live over in the glory of his divine empowerment and the glory of his divine grace and, and the authority that he's given to us by the Spirit. Rise up. Stand up and begin to shine. But if you don't participate, if you don't stand up, you haven't believed the report. If you don't begin to move out in it, you haven't believed the report. You haven't started moving in faith. And so there is always a delay. You're waiting, you're waiting for another day. And all that happens is you become, you become established in doubt and unbelief rather than faith. The only, way you get to the only way that you get to begin to move into faith is to participate with faith, to start doing what the Word of God says by the Spirit. Huh? The Holy Spirit fill you with authority. If you don't have authority, if you don't have boldness, you ask Him, oh, Lord, give me boldness. He'll fill you with boldness. Hallelujah. You don't have a compassion for the lost and dying world. You say, Lord, fill me with a compassion for the lost and dying world. Fill me with your compassion. You know, you read about David, how that he prayed for people who were his enemies, who hated him, like he was praying for his own mother. I'm like, ooh, Lord, I want a deeper compassion. And then just stand out to you when you read those kinds of things. What great compassion the Lord gives to us. I don't know that I've ever moved in that kind of compassion. I want to move in that kind of path. Anything about us discover like that, about God's compassion, His nature, His ways, His love, I want that because I know it's good. Everything I've touched within the realm of love is good. Huh? Has anybody noticed that? Yeah. Anybody notice that? Love is good. Anybody notice that? And then you come along and mess it all up. Right? But love is good. 
Uh, what if we learn how to come along and participate with it and not mess it up, but to obey the laws? You know there's laws to love? Did you know there's rules to love? Oh, you legalist. Man, then a legalist. It's just, it just the way it is. There, there's rules to living. You have to eat. Oh, you legalist. Yes, and you must drink some water too. Ah, oh, you're just legalist. <laughs> there's rules to life. And if you drink coffee and Cokes all the time, you're going to get a urinary infection and you're going to get dehydrated and you're probably going to die in the next, you know, early anyways. And you'll be from diabetes, if nothing else. There's rules. There's rules. There's rules. And they're good rules and they're not hard rules. And, 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 I, and, and I'm telling you right now, there's nothing legalistic about it to me to sit down and eat. I enjoy it. I have to do it, but I enjoy it. It's good. As long as there's a good cook around. But you get hungry enough, it don't matter. Bad cook can be around. Yeah, you get hungry enough. Huh? And the old guy stirring up a pot of beans is good. And bark coffee, the whole works. See that I'm telling you. Just depends on how hungry you are. You just blessed. I just hope tonight that you just blessed. Oh, if you're sitting at the banqueting table the feast of the Lord and you're recognizing that I'm eating those things that are changing my life right now as we speak. Yes. I'm taking the whole of those things that are causing me to lay hold on the realms of His life, which is eternal life. Right now, as we just gathered here, I'm not being condemned. I'm being encouraged. I'm not being insulted. I'm being lifted up. I, I, I'm not being rejected. I'm, being, I'm, I'm receiving counsel to step into a greater dimension of experiencing the acceptance that I have in the beloved. Thank you, Jesus. Pride of life turns it around. Humility makes it one way. Pride makes it another. Lowliness and meekness makes it one way. Stubbornness makes it another. Oh, you're going to have to bow low in his presence. I hope that's not an obligation for you. I hope that's not a strain on your knees. <laughs> I mean, you know, what would you give? What price would you pay to be able to have couple of minutes in his presence an audience with him how long would you wait there are people that would get a hotel room and wait for a year to see William Branham for one hour for 30 minutes for 30 minutes because when the man was moving in the anointed no matter what you what's wrong with you you were healed they'd get a hotel room and wait follow him around wait I got an appointment, reminding, calling every day. Yeah. Yeah, you're about 10 months out now. Come on, man. What would you do? What would you do in that expectation that you could have an audience with Christ Jesus? And yet he's made himself so available. He's opened up the doors of life so that anybody, you can't, have a relationship with Jesus Christ the way he wants it and stay sick. You can't, I, you listen to me. Let the chips fall where they may. You can't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and stay in doubt and unbelief. You can't have a relationship with Jesus Christ and stay in a place of murmuring and complaining. You can't stay and have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and remain as you are for years on end. No. You got religion. More religion than relationship. It's measurable. It's quantifiable. You watch a person who they do not change. They continue with the same problems. They continue with the same issues. They continue with the same disposition. That's more religion than relationship. Because relationship is going to change you from glory to glory. It is an effective power, a greater changing power than exists anywhere else in all the universe. People just lie to themselves and want everybody else to believe their lie. I'm not buying it. You're with me. I'm not going to buy it. Don't you buy it either. If God said it and has his results, then you believe it. Otherwise, you say, you know what? Just look at people say, well, you just need to get right. Just need to get right with God. People come. They're not going to come and tell me something bad about somebody else. You know why? Because I'm going to rebuke them. 
They have fear to come tell me something bad about somebody else. They're going to get severely chastised from me. Huh? I'm going to say, you foul spirit of hell. How you, are you with me? If everybody start doing that, you wouldn't be no more gossip anymore. I'm going to be no more listening ears. Come on now. Come on now. Huh? Because you know why I do that? I've got a relationship with Jesus. I know how he feels about it. Hallelujah. That relationship with him brings me into agreement with him, a oneness with him. Praise God. I don't want anything in my life that he, that is an offense to him. Your conscience may be so soothed. Your conscience may, may have been satisfied, but the Holy Ghost could still be grieved. Your conscience is not equated to the, how the disposition of the Holy Ghost. You, you can be, your conscience can believe a lie and you can self-justify. Oh, no, I want to be corrected. I want to stand up here in the light. I want to be chastened. I want to be instructed. Why? I'm desperate. I'm desperate for a greater dimension of the life of God revealed in me. And I'm going to stay right there. And I'm going to obey Him. And I'm going to learn righteousness. And I'm going to learn to do what it is that I need to do in order to follow the rules and obey the rules of it. In Colossians chapter 3, it takes me a long time to get to scriptures. I, some people start off with scriptures. Some people end with scriptures. <laughs> I just want to be living scripture. I just want to be an expression. God has made me a living expression, a living epistle. Uh, I've been written of God so that you look at my life. You're going to hear. You, I don't care where you. Get, you can wake me up in the middle of the night. I'm gonna say, oh, Jesus. You wake me up in the middle of the night. Hallelujah. You can catch me anywhere. You can catch me. In, I'm going to talk to you about the thing. Heaven, heaven's going to be flowing right out of my spirit. I'm going to quote scriptures to you right, left, center, up and down. Amen. I'm just going to live this way. This is a good way to live. And I'm planning on losing the English language before I leave here tonight. I'm planning on, go I'm, I'm planning on going way over into glory land. I'm, I'm, planning on, I'm planning on taking that which I have freely received and freely given it out. If you've got to earn something from God, you can't have it. Let me say it again. If you've got to earn something from God, you can't have it. All that you get, all the Father gives, you have to freely receive it. He says, freely, he says, freely, you have received, freely give. Hallelujah. I didn't earn one bit of it, wasn't deserving of one bit of it, not worthy of one bit of, I, a bit of it. He just said to do it, I receive it, and it's done. If he spared not his own son, but offered him up for the sins of us all, how much more shall you by him give us all things freely? Romans 8, 32. What a wonderful verse of Scripture. <laughs> Everything that belongs to God is mine. I'm an heir with the Lord Jesus Christ and a joint heir with... I'm a joint heir with... co heir with the Lord Jesus Christ and heir with the Father. Not, not just in the future right now, so that I can execute his will. But as long as you're wrapped up in your own earthly desires and earthly experiences and earthly wants, you're sharing too much stuff with yourself for God to fit in. He is going to have to say no. And then, then that's, not, that's not what it's about. Praise God. I praise the Lord for the wife that the Lord has given me and the children that have, he has given to me. But he gave them to me for us to move together in the things of the Spirit. Not to be distracted with this thing and that thing and the other thing. But to hook up in faith together. To see greater things happen. To see nations shaken. The Lord just gave us another entrance into Japan from in a totally different way. A miracle just took place. When we begin to go, we, we walk it out. See, some of us, because we, we don't get our hamburger inside of three minutes, we discourage and think that it ain't going to happen. And, you know, the water's going on in the shop in there. I mean, where's the customer service around here? God doesn't have a customer service department. <laughs> He's not raising brats. He's raising highly disciplined soldiers, highly disciplined saints. Mm. Yeah, and, and, and Father can sort it out real quick whether or not you prayed the prayer of faith and you believe what you're asking for and you know that you've received them because you're still asking for the same thing two years later. And you had not let up two years later. 
That proves you believe. Huh? You're not one bit more discouraged. And all of a sudden, you just walk around doing the same thing, saying the same prayer when everybody else may have given up, but you've learned how men ought to pray always and not to faint. you right there. And all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, a miracle happens, and God opens up a door that no man can shut, and you go, whoa. How did I get here? Because I continued to pray every day until it happened. Because I continued to lay hold on those things, which I know the Lord has purposed me to do. He's purposed you and me to go into all the world and preach the gospel beginning in your neighborhood. First, beginning in your own life. You need to preach the gospel to yourself. You need to tell yourself about how blessed you are and how you the righteousness of God and filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized with His presence and heir and joined heir and made one with Him. You need to prophesy over yourself. You need to get up in the morning and preach good news to yourself so then you can get all built up in the faith to go preach good news to somebody else. Some of you need to go preach the good news to your spouse. They look like they need it from you. <laughs> then preach the good news to your children. Father, we thank you that you're going to give us enough wisdom to recognize that every encounter we have with people is a divine appointment to where we can say, hey, God is interested in you. He stepped into your life. There was a wreck in front of me on the way to church, and the guy went down on his motorcycle. So I hopped out of the car, and I got his motorcycle, and he's just cussing and screaming, and it's all kinds of foul stuff. He's got his plugs in his ears, you know, because that's where people live today. They live in a false reality. They listen to that craziness, man. They take on a disposition of it. I took his motorcycle. I took it off to the side. I'm trying to get it. He's cussing right, center, left, and finally I looked at him in his eyes, and he just shut down. I said, are you all right? He just shut down. He's like, and the traffic was backing up and whatnot. And, you know, I just didn't feel a, re a release. But to, to, I didn't have a, an unction to say something. But I'm telling you right now, I got back in the car and I said, Lord, forgive me for not being you in that situation. And, and telling the guy, look, you should be blessed. You should be very thankful. God's here right now helping you you got to quit dishonoring him. See, we need to start speaking with more authority on God's behalf because we showed up. I was there because God was there. I was in no, there's no coincidence. There's no accidents. Huh? And I just was, I was so turned off by his foul mouth. You know, it's just like, it and just, but that's all they know. That's their entire vocabulary. Just one word after the other, after the other, after the other. And yet, God in his love and his mercy can come right down in the midst of that and be unaffected by looking at people's eyes and say, I love you, I care for you, I'm here for you. I want you to respond to me and let me show you how to come up out of that life of death and out, out of that realm of death and destruction. His father's always holding out life. We're just gonna, we're just gonna have to hook up with him in a deeper dimension, amen? amen. I'm, just, I'm committed to it. So here we, here we are. This is right along the same, really in the same vein of Romans 10, 10 here in Colossians chapter three, verse one. For with the heart man believes in the righteousness because we believe in the resurrection of Jesus. What happened when Jesus was raised up from the dead? Well, when we accepted what God did for us through him, we were raised up together with him. So we read here, if we then be risen with Christ. Are you risen with Christ? Yes. Yeah. And before you have a resurrection, what are you going to have? There's got to be a death before there's ever a resurrection. Hallelujah. Your life has got an end. You've got an end. You need to remind yourself. You need to put these things into you. Stir up yourself by putting yourself in remembrance of these things. You need, to, you need to prophesy over yourself. My life came to an end. I had a miracle moment of salvation where I gave my life over to the living God. I called upon the name of the Lord Jesus. And instantaneously, I was crucified with him. I was buried with him by baptism into his death. All a big miracle. I mean, like I've taken back 2,000 years ago, it all happened. I'm back here and it's all in time travel, instantaneous. You know, I'm just using these expression you know it's a miracle there is no time travel it's just all right now at op this opportunity at this very moment i don't want anybody saying here's talking about time travel these guys are spaced out you know what i'm saying it's effective for us right now. There is no time period between the two. And we're raised up together with him. And we're aligned together with him. And we're seated in the seat of authority. If we'll begin to prophesy these things, the word of God produces faith. And we begin to function in the faith, we will have the results. We won't be stuck. 
Still another year goes by and the gifts of the Spirit have not yet grown and matured. What would you have to say about yourself? I'd start fasting and praying. I'm, a, I'm not having it. I'm going to have a measurable increase in the power of God and the anointing of God. I'm going to have a measurable increase in being able to, to have influence in churches in the United States of America and influence in the lost and dying world around the world. I'm going to have it. I'm going to speak it into existence. And you can too. You've got to rise up from the place of defeat and doubt and self-interest to do this thing. You've got to rise up from the realms of your own mind and, get, and, and receive the mind of Christ, the mind of the Spirit. And, you've got to, and it's a very practical thing where you shut down all of your imaginations and you start believing what God says because that's where we're taught how to walk in the mind of Christ is believing what God said in His Word and declaring what He's, de what he's already declared. <laughs> Everything changes there. I think, this, I, think for, I think for many people in the church today, they have no awareness that, they're, that they're, they really believe that they're doing these things and they're not. They have so self-justified that they've moved beyond the conviction of the word. They think they've already got it. Yet there's plenty of evidence that you don't have it. These things are going on in your life. It's evidence. It's not true. People can justify the craziest things. I don't want to be self-justified. I want to stand in the light. And I want the Lord to rebuke me. I want to be reproved. I believe that I need to be rebuked. And that I need to be reproved. That's what opens me up to correction and change. I'm saying, Lord, rebuke me. Reprove me. Correct me. Instruct me. I learned it from the prophet Habakkuk. I go up upon my high place, that place of being able to interact in the realms of the Spirit, that place he was given by charge of the anointing that he'd received to where that he was the seer. He could hear what God had to say and see what God was doing so he could declare it to men. He was, that's his high place. I'm going to go up there and hear what God says. When he instructs me, he corrects me. He tells me where I'm wrong and where I need to change. There's a lot of people don't want to hear about where they're wrong and where they need to, be ch to change. Can you believe that Rahab is actually in the church today? Rahab means defiance. And that defiance comes out and manifests a relationship of husband and wife. That defiance manifests itself between relationship between those who are in the church who are called as the body of Christ and the ministry that God has placed over them. They won't be corrected. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Well, there's got to be a revival. There's got to, there's got to, for that to change, we've got to have to participate with the change. There's got to be some place where Father, as it were, can get an upper hand, where he can get some momentum, where there can be an example, where there can be a display of the truth. He doesn't need many. He can change the whole world with 120. But he's, there's some rules. If you be risen with Christ, set your affections. Look at this. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. What does that mean? I want a greater display of heaven in my life. I want heaven. I want a greater display of the power of God in my life. I'm interested in true riches, not temporal riches. I'm interested in that which Jesus Christ revealed through his life and, and declared that it's supposed to be in my life to cast out devils, raise the dead, command the sick to be made whole, to deliver people from the, from the bondage of darkness and death, to go and seek and save that which is lost. I'm seeking, that's what's above. How do you measurably do that in your life? How do you set a measure? People say, I pray without ceasing. How many of you pray without ceasing? Good. Thank you. How many of you like to pray without ceasing? Okay, good. I'm happy to see that. Praise God. Somebody said, I would have raised my hand, but I was intimidated. I'm glad you're intimidated about that one. Because I would have really challenged you. I'm telling you right now, that kind of communion produces a kind of faith that we want to see. You listen to me. And, and I would just simply say, you want to get there? Then why don't you set some measurable scales for you? The psalmist prayed seven, praised the Lord seven times a day. If you put that down to 14 hours a day as a day, that's every two hours. But reality of it is, is a day is less than that, really. The operation of a day in many respects. 
because if we, put, if we confine it to the operation of the day when Daniel said he, he, he knelt down to pray three times a day, that would have been the morning sacrifice at 9 o'clock, in the morning, 12 o'clock, noon, and the evening sacrifice around 3 to 4. If you now measure that, you're praying almost every hour. You're praising almost every hour. You're stopping and praising. Smith Wigglesworth said, I've never prayed more than 15 minutes, but I never went more than 15 minutes without prayer. And you can see the results that go on there. Paul said, I, Paul said, I speak in tongues more than y'all. I didn't say continually. He said, but I do speak in tongues more than y'all. And you see what it resulted in his life. Well, what, all we need to do is follow these examples. What is that, it's, what is that gonna do? It's gonna cost us something. What then is that? That's the measurable self-interest. Are you listening to me or did I lose you an hour ago? I've been building up to this moment. It's the measurable self-interest. I don't have time. What do you mean read the Bible an hour a day? You know, if I said to most people, I said, have, if I said, well, do you read an hour Bible hour a day? They'd say, yeah, but then I challenge them. Okay, then read the, read the Bible in 90 days from cover to cover. Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21. Because you can do it if you read an hour a day. Then all of a sudden they discover, uh-oh, I don't read an hour a day. I thought I did. You know why? We've got this thing called reconstructive memory. It's a funny thing. Do some research on reconstructive memory. You won't be so certain you remembered anything from the past anymore. Huh? That's also why you need to, that's why if somebody offends you, you need to rebuke them so you don't hate them in the heart, your heart. That's why you don't want to carry offense because you will create a something in your mind that did not happen. It's provable. It's measurable in the world of men. And when we, when we subject ourselves to the things of this world by carrying a spirit of offense, we have the same results that the rest of the people in the world get. Don't say you're some special pe person in the kingdom of God and you're immune to it because you're walking around with the same demon influence. You listening to me? You don't carry offense. You walk around with a pure heart. You forgive everybody. But you can't do that unless you're receiving love from heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. If you then be risen with him, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sits at the right hand of God. The, the Lord says to, you know, Paul says to the church at Ephesus. He says, Lord, give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you that eyes can be opened. So that they can see what is the riches of your inheritance in your saints. To see the exceeding greatness of your power that was given to us when you were raised from the dead and set at the own right it, it, at the right hand of the Father, the right hand of the majesty on high. Right there, that power, that glory where Christ Jesus is at. That place where we've been seated together with him in a heavenly realm. An authority, an ability to decide how things are supposed to be. A decision that we make out of Oh, uh, well, an authority that we have out of the decisions that we make. Lord, I don't want that stuff being shown on the television anymore. I participate with it in the realms of the Spirit. I have an authority to shut it down. Listen, I'm commanding satellites to call, fall, fall out of the sky. And I'm not letting up. Because that's propagating all kinds of iniquity all over the world and shoving... You talk about, people say, oh, you're shoving Christianity down our throat. Well, Satan's shoving his, his, his death down everybody's throat. I mean, I'm not going to be intimidated. I'm going to slap you. I'm going to smash you, in fact. And I'm not talking about a human being. I'm talking about the powers of darkness. So I said, you can't pray satellites down. Oh, yeah, I can pray satellites down out of heaven, out of the sky. Father's told us that whatever we ask, he'll do it. There's a place of authority that is given to us. Hallelujah. I'm ready to see the power. I'm ready to see people set free from the power of hell. I'm not going to stand by and watch sickness go on and disease. I, I get provoked by it. I get provoked by it. I mean, little Anna started having a little bit of a runny nose. I, it, doesn't, it doesn't just, you know, make me feel sad or concerned. I get mad. I get angry. It has no right. It's a power of hell. It has no right in my life or anything that is, belongs to me. When all of a sudden it becomes that way for you, things will begin to change. All of a sudden, heaven's more real to you than earth. The things of God's more real to you than the things of self. 
This is what Father, you want, them, you want, a, greater, you want a greater dimension in the life of Jesus? Yeah. Then you're going to have to take up the disposition of Jesus. How he, was, he came to destroy the works of darkness. And we saw how he destroyed the works of darkness. He said, blind see, deaf hear, crippled walk, tormented go free, devils leave. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's how he is. Just, everywhere he saw the effect of sin and sickness and disease, he destroyed it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was able to destroy sin by saying, your sins are forgiven you. Destroyed it. Erased it by the word of his power. Is that amazing? By the word of his power, he, holds up, he upholds all things by the word of his power. He created all things in expansive galaxies by the word of his power. He says, he says, go free from your sin. Be forgiven of your sin. And by the word of his power, it's destroyed, it's erased, it's removed. Wow. 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 To release people. Paul says, Paul says the Lord showed me that I was supposed to go everywhere, turn people from the power of Satan, the power of God. I'm grabbing hold of that. I'm grabbing hold of that. I'm not asking people for permission. I'm, I'm smashing Satan, turning people from the power of Satan. Say, you're, well, you're, there's some rules to that. Satan can't come to you and exercise his lust in your life and his authority and his doubt and his unbelief and his, and his nonsense in your life. There is going to be an exercise going on in your life where you deal with every issue that comes at you out of the realms of that which is earthly, that which is sensual, and that which is devilish. Father's going to train you. Do you want to be trained? Yes. Well, then you're going to have to stick with the program because there's not, you can sit there wondering why you didn't get your answer to prayer in the next three minutes or the next 30 days. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's, it doesn't matter if it's, the next three minutes or the next 30 years. I'm not letting up. God, God's not a liar. I believe. There's a provable thing that I believe. I believe. You look at Abraham. You look at how long he waited for the son, the promise, the heir that was God uh, had, had, had spoken was his. He didn't stagger the promises. God called and counted God faithful. Went around telling people about his son. He said, the Lord says, set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. It's a rule. That's measurable. If you dare take up the challenge, if you are so brave that you are actually willing to face reality, is there anybody of such a nature in this place that has a, such a stout heart that they could actually look in the face of reality and not run in fear. To really begin to deal measurably with the contrast of your affections for the things of this world versus your affections for the things of heaven. Because when you get to quantitating, you know, apparatus out as it were you begin to just deal with the the value of your life where where you put your what really is important to you what makes you sad what makes you happy what gets you excited what gets you depressed huh what gets you up in the morning gets you moving versus what keeps you in bed huh and what, what, what really gets you going? What really is the motivation of your life? What really moves you? That's your affections. That's your passions. That's what you look forward to. The Lord says this. He says, you're dead. Say, I'm dead. I'm dead. He says, you're dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Paul said, I no longer live. Now he actually takes and he presents that across denominations, across every dimension of the expression of people's lives and declares to all of them, you no longer live. He says, you're bought with the price you're not your own. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, that's really tough, isn't it? It's pretty easy right now 
But tomorrow, about the time you want to do what you want to do. And God says, no. I've told you to do this other thing. Now, he, don't, he doesn't say it that way. He just leaves it on you. Then all of a sudden, it becomes a little bit hard. But, Lord, you understand. You understand that I've got to go, and I've got to work eight hours a day and wear myself out and be so tired when I come home. I don't have time to do anything but prop my feet up on the couch and do whatever. You understand? No, he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand. You don't understand. You don't understand that there is a realm of the anointing where you can be supercharged with the presence of God and have the same strength and energy that you had better than when you left for work. There is a realm, a prayer room that you can get into and you'll get strength and you'll get health and you'll get vigor for your life. You'll come out of that prayer room. you come out just as refreshed. My goodness, this would build up. It's going to be hard for you to go to sleep when you finally do get to bed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I found this, I found this place of living. I found this place of glory divine. Hallelujah. I found this place that you, you, you come home after being, after working for a long, you know, after working for 12 hours. And you, you, over into a realm of praise and thanksgiving. And all of a sudden, your whole body begins to shake under the power of his presence. You, 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 you begin to become overwhelmed with the glory of heaven. And now you got yourself another five to six hours. What are you going to do with five to six hours now? How are you going to spend it? A lot of people make decisions about those five to six hours that have huge impacts upon the spiritual life. Don't sleep your life away. Go to bed. Sleep. Those five or six hours. Stay awake. Stay awake. And don't just waste your time. There's a place, there's a place that the Spirit of the Lord would take you and build you up. There's things that He has speak through your life. You can sit, sit down and start expressing those things. You say, Lord, I want to be able to prophesy over people. I want to be able to speak your word over people. I want to be able to declare the things of heaven over people. Lord, give me a word. You just sit there in front of the typewriter. Where it, was, it used to be a typewriter for me. You sit there in front of the typewriter, laboring over the word of the Lord. Did it went for the typewriter? It went to my Mac 214. Just in there, laboring over the word of the Lord. Laboring over the word of God. Letting it be distilled out. Oh, Lord, give me a word. Give me the tongue of the learned. Give me the word for people in, in, in season. Let me be able to discern it. Let me be able to say it right. Let your word just flow out of me with exactness. And I would write out a message of how to be saved. I'd write out a message of how to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I'd write out a message of just these basic things for different people, of, of, this, of this person who's, who's bound with drugs or this person who's bound with alcohol or this person who's got demonic power in their life and lay out all the scriptures of how to deal with that and write it out so that when, at that moment in time when I'm faced with it, I'm ready, I'm skilled, I've been developed in the Word. People, what are you going to do with your time? Are you going to set your affections on things above? Are you going to be schooled by God? Or are you going to just let it happen haphazardly? It don't happen haphazardly. It doesn't happen on the fly. It happens because you give yourself to this realm and you let God prepare you into every good work in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The more you flow in the anointing, the stronger the anointing gets. How often do you flow in the anointing? I'm going to tell you right now, when you sit down and be, grab a hold of the Word of God and begin to minister to yourself and to the Lord and the Word of God because you want to be built up in the Word of God, I'm telling you, you're flowing in the anointing. When you begin to pace the floor, crying out to God, asking Father for His reign to come upon your life, for His presence to begin to be manifest in your life the way that He's purposed it, everything's going to begin to change. When you learn how to touch heaven, you learn how to make that transition out of the earthly into the heavenly because it's a transition can be felt if you don't know about the transition God wants you to learn he wants you to grab a hold of it he doesn't want you, he doesn't want to, you have to wait to the end of the year either I'm getting ready to pray for people who have pains in their body uh, pain in the left arm other things that are going on in this place sickness and disease it's not supposed to, you're supposed to have authority over sickness and disease and and where you start is you don't bow down to it 
He doesn't bow down to it. You didn't, you, if you're going to run, if you're going to run and go get flu shots, you're just going to have to depend upon the flu shots. You just believe me. When you have to deal with sickness and you don't lay down to it, but you begin to grab a hold of the faith realm and you take authority over it, every time you do, faith is getting stronger because you're participating. If you're running to the medicine cabinet, you can do that if you want, but that's not going to do anything for making, helping your faith to grow, be established. My, recently, my wife got, came down with a, 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 a respiratory thing respiratory sickness and I prayed over her and it didn't seem to be getting any better and I said honey you're going to have to exercise your faith it's time for you to move in this thing okay for me if I'm praying something doesn't happen immediately I know there's something another dynamic going on that's the way I look at it I don't I, I don't want to wait for later I'm, I know that I can still it's going to happen but I don't want to wait for later. I want it to be now. I believe God wants it that way. And so I said, baby, you're just going to have to take, take out. Or you, take, you take charge of this thing. You go after this in the realms of the Spirit and everything will be changed. And it seemed like she was getting worse. And I said, look, honey, eh, you know, if, if you want to get some kind of medication or antibiotics or whatever, that's okay. I mean, you can do that. You know, you don't, don't feel like you can't do it. But if... I don't even know, I don't know, I don't know if I even said, but if you'll press in, you'll have authority over it. I, I don't think I did, I said, I just gave her, I just gave her the liberty, you just do it if you want to get anything to, to soothe that or to, because she was unable to breathe at night, and then I can't live without her, right? I, you know, I wasn't concerned. I might have been concerned for a second, but I rebuked it sharply, <laughs> lest I should come under the authority of it. Because you fear bring you into bondage, and so what she did was she just said she's, she she determined in her heart. No, I'm taking hold of this thing, and she busted it. She broke it off of her, and I guarantee you, it won't ever come back. She broke through a realm. Why? Because she wouldn't lay down to it. Because she believed the word of God. She stood up in the word of God. God's word hasn't changed. People in their mind change God's word. They self justify. That's self-righteousness. They, well, uh, it's okay for me to have this, you know. No, it ain't. It's a demon power of hell. You need to get up off your fanny and start getting into the fight. Uh, and get off your lazy, blessed assurance and get into this scrap. Start standing up, taking hold of the authority of God and being who you're supposed to be because Father supposed, said he wants to be glorified in your body and in your spirit. Now, I'm not going to get to really minister on what I wanted to minister on because I really want, I was planning on minister on second chapter of Peter, second epistle of Peter, rather, <laughs> chapter 1, and I was going to start at verse 1 and end up at verse 11 tonight. Well, I was actually considering going on the way to verse 16. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But at any rate, I was going to minister to verse, verse 11. And um, the reason being is because I believe the Lord has given me an assignment to teach, teach people how to walk in the ways of righteousness, to teach you how to give yourself to righteousness, to living in righteousness. Not works, not works, to living in the dynamics of the expression of the very life of Jesus Christ. To living in the dynamics of the very expression of the life of the Holy Ghost. It is provable, measurable, that you are being led of the Holy Spirit. And those things are the acts of righteousness, and they are seen in love. Hallelujah. Do you believe anyone's walking in the Holy Ghost if they're hating? Of course not. Do you believe that anybody's walking in the Holy Ghost if they're depressed and sorrowful? Of course you do. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many people sad and sorrowful in this place. 
you would rebuke it sharply and it wouldn't be allowed in your life. You would touch the realms of glory. I mean, I tell you right now, if I had sorrow and sadness and depression in my life and I was in a meeting and I got touched with the joy of the Lord and the glory of His salvation, I'd stay here after everybody left to just make sure I got it and it ain't going to leave. I'd just go ahead and stay in it, hallelujah, till I knew exactly how to access that. Huh? You just keep making sure the door works. <laughs> and you shut it and open it up again. You lock it and make sure you got the key there. Unlocks it and you get, it, you get it all squared away before you stop. There's a place to live in joy all the time. There's a, it's measurable. Peace is full rabba se to ya. When you think the most sikin the most eretai. When you think the most sikin the sitili ma poroto. You know more when the most eretai. When you mong chese ni mikia shapoya. When you think about satani. When you think about Romans chapter fourteen. Hallelujah. When you think about Romans chapter fourteen, that the, that the kingdom of God that we have right now, that He's saying is, is ours right now, this heavenly realm right now. We're seated with Him in a heavenly place. It's not a positional salvation. It's a reality of a place where He's in us and we're in Him. It's the declaration of John fifteen. Come dwell in me. It's that which God has made measurable and definable. And he tells to you and he tells us, he gives us this invitation. Then he says, come, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not in your ritual. It's not in your religion. It's not in your ideas. It's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. And then you're saying, okay, wait a minute. I want this to be the fruits of the Spirit. That's righteousness. The activities of the Holy Ghost. Should we give ourselves to this realm? Should we give ourselves? Should we give ourselves adding to our faith virtue? Should we make all diligence? Give all diligence? Give all diligence? In other words, seek, have our affections all wrapped up in these things. Give all diligence to making our calling and our election sure. What is our calling and our election? That we be conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. That we be conformed to the image of the Son. That we give all diligence to make our calling and election sure by giving all attendance to these things in our life. Just saying, yes, I'm giving myself over to the Holy Ghost to walk in this humility. I'm not going to allow stubbornness I'm going to give the disposition of the Lord a submission to authority every kind of authority <laughs> people all upset oh I don't know upset angry mad upset oh Obama ah. you're supposed to be praying for him oh, oh I'm all upset oh he, he betrayed us he made an agreement with Cuba praise God you had no idea. Now the door's opened up for us to go preach in Havana. You got your head in the wrong spot. You got your head in the realms of men. You think like men. You know, your head's not in heaven. Your head's in men. Your head's in politics and the living of it. I'm probably talking to people on the web right now. I'm sure, I'm not talking to me. I didn't even hear. Huh? We, were, we were already working and praying about being able to do a, a crusade in Havana, Cuba. Now John's going on Jan January 22nd to meet with pastors in Cuba, in Cuba. And now that this uh, agreement has been made and a door's been opened because of what the Obama administration did, all the conservatives and all the rest of the people all upset. It's just the actions of the Holy Ghost, God opening up the opportunity to go preach the gospel in Havana in the big stadium that they have filled it up and have Castro on the platform. Hallelujah. 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 I mean, if Jesse Jackson has enough influence to get Castro to pray with him back in the 70s, what do you think we're going to be able to do when we go there with the fullness of the Holy Ghost in 2015? This year. This year is a year of great exploits for those who are strong. For the weak, you're going to have to take another year. Now, the beautiful thing of it is, you know what the beautiful thing of it is? You can make up for lost time if you get a right mind. You have to get your mind right. You have to get your attitude right. You have to get your affections right. And you do. And God in a day will give you the capacity to shake things. Yeah, in a day, fill you with the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. In a moment, a baptism of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Hallelujah. The glory of God will overwhelm you. And you'll be so excited about it, you won't ever want to get out. Listen, I have revival and move of God in my life all the time. You know why? Because I found out I can have it all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We were over there. We started the church there in, in Bly, Oregon last Sunday. And, you know, we had, you know, I don't know. We had about, I don't know, what was it, 20 people or so in the meeting. And the back row was all visitors from the local area. 
I'm telling you right now. I had a move of God. I had the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost set down in the place. Why? Because I was there. That's right. God is going to move when there's not someone that knows how to move with him. He expresses everything he does through our life. He expresses it through our lives. If there's no one there that believes and, and is able to hook up with him, there will be no man moving of God. There will be no manifestation of God. Just be dry, dull shucks. Might as well go to the other church. Why have another church? Somebody said, why are you going to start a church? I don't know. Ask the Lord. Well, actually, I do know. We can give room for the power of God to move. I don't know what you're doing over there, but I know what we're doing over here. And as long as, there's, a, as, long as there's, power, there's room for the power of God to move, where there's the preaching of the Word and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost, I'm not going to preach without the manifest presence. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to preach without a demonstration of the Spirit because wherever God is moving, there's signs and wonders. I'm not going to have some, I'm not have a meeting without signs and wonders. Because that's, the, that's, what, that's just righteousness. That's, right, that's, the, that's obedience to the Lord. The Lord says, if you just give all diligence to make your calling election sure. If you just give all attendance to adding to your faith, virtue, and to virtue knowledge. You give yourself to this godliness and this brotherly love and these things that you're going to have many challenges every day that will come up against you walking in this way, walking in lowliness and meekness. Hearing the Lord say, I'm going to dwell with those. When the Lord says, I'm going to dwell with those of broken, contrite heart. In Isaiah 66, I know exactly what I'm going to do. You know why? Because I want a greater demonstration of the power of God in my life. I want a greater dis demonstration of the Spirit of God in my life. So I'm going to do exactly what the Bible says. He said, I'll dwell with them. So therefore, I'm going I'm to do it. He says, come dwell in me. Come abide in me. So therefore, I'm going to do it. Because I really, truly want these things that I'm describing to you. And I'm asking you tonight, if you really, truly want these things, and you're going to obey God, you're going to respond to God. You're going to obey the rules. You're going to give your heart to walking in the ways of righteousness. You're going to give your heart, in other words, to being led by the Holy Ghost, to walking in the Spirit, to walking in the Holy Ghost, to, being, to, to, to living by the Holy Spirit. I mean, you know what? When you're, giving, when you're given such a beautiful garment, such beautiful clothing, such comfortable clothing, and you've been endued with the very life of Jesus Christ, you put on the Lord Jesus Christ, why would you ever take him off? Why would you ever take him off? Why would you ever take off that power and that glory? In Him is the faith that moves mountains. In Him is the faith that whatever you ask the Father will do. In Him is all power and all glory. In Him is all the fullness of God revealed. Why would we want to live any other life? Why would we live in sorrow? Why would we live in vain imaginations that create discouragement? Why is it that we've not yet grown up enough to shut those things down? Why? You have to ask yourself, too busy self-justifying, too busy self-righteousness, too busy convincing yourself that you have things that you do not have, going your own way, not doing his way, having your affections consumed with things of this world, being satisfied with the identity that men can give you, feeding on it, feeding on men's approval. People feed on it continually, feed on men's approval. Prison, imprisoned by fear. No, Papa wants to liberate you. Ha. Hallelujah. He wants to cause you to be so filled up with the spirit of love. Power. Soundness of mind. If you, want, if you want to be able to, to grow and mature in the mind of the Spirit, then you're going to have to quit with the vain imaginations. If you want to grow in faith, then you've got to quit ministering to yourself doubt. If you want to grow in boldness, then you're going to have to quit listening to discouraging lies. You're going to have to quit talking to yourself and communing with yourself like that and start prophesying over yourself. Start speaking the Word of God to yourself. That's where you learn how to prophesy anyways. That's when you get to learn, learn, just keep reading. Just keep reading. Just devour the word. Just eat it. Hallelujah. Just consume it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, many times I hear music when there's no one playing. I looked over at David and I'm going, well, okay, Lord, what do you want to do? And then I, there's John up there. He's actually playing. Well, there's actually someone there tonight so everybody can hear it. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing changes about your life until it changes on the inside. Nothing changes until it changes on the inside. And the Holy Spirit is here to bring change on the inside. All you have to do is participate with Him. The Father just says, Father says, will you will it? Will you will it? I say, I will it. I will it. I will to do your will. You know, I just simply say, Father, your will be done. That's me willing his will. When I say, Lord, your will be done, I want your will. I want your life. I want you to come rule over me. I want to be led by you walking. I want to understand how to move in you. All I desire is a greater manifestation of your person in my life and to my life. You don't get a, you, listen, you don't get one without the other. They both come together. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. This is the year of great exploits for those who know God. I know Him. I'm strong. So you may know Him, but you're weak. And you're constantly tossed back and forth with the winds of doctrines winds of things of opinions the winds of circumstance you're weak you're not going to do exploits you'll be you'll be shut down you'll be paralyzed huh i've come to realize that as soon as the lord is about ready to do something in my life he will allow because the enemy is accusing me and saying i don't have right to execute that kind of authority he'll allow the enemy to come try to mess with me i'm on him I'm on, i know what you do you, i know what you're doing you're trying to stop me from doing what fathers have called me to do. And now I can engage with something that is personified and not something that is in interest. Or a, a, uh, a decision or a choice is personified to me. I know what you're trying to do. You foul spirit of hell. You get out of my way. You take your doubt and go elsewhere. You take your lies and go elsewhere. You take your discouragement, you go elsewhere. You take your lust, you go elsewhere. Those that are strong. Who's strong? Those who have the Word of God abiding in them. When the Word of God abides in you, you're strong. Those who are strong are going to do exploits. This is a year of exploits. So long as you're going to participate. If you disqualify yourself, that nothing's going to happen. The only person that really can disqualify is you. The only person that can really dis- disqualify you is you. His Father's qualified you. But you have to embrace what, what He's given you. You've got to say it's yours. It's mine. It belongs to me. Nambrobosotukhrepe. <laughs> Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Now in the name of the Masadeya. Mind to the Christ. Highest to promosifica. Mind the Visitus. If it is. Now in Jesus' name. Just receive. Now in Jesus' name. Just receive. Now, in Jesus' name. How many people in this place here to, today, you believe that you're strong? And where do you get that strength? That's right, from the Holy Ghost. One of the greatest prayers that you could have prayed over you and that you can pray, is, Lord, strengthen me by your spirit my inner being. Because then there's the capacity to have everything that God wants for you to have. 
And see, you're commanded of the Lord to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. Well, I mean, if you don't believe you're strong, you don't have none of that. Oh, brother, the Scripture says, you know. And you come up with some kind of crazy idea about why you're supposed to be weak. Those are the interferences that the enemy of, of your soul causes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just receive healing right now. Just receive healing right now. Just receive healing right now. Just receive that foul spirit of coal. Come bring him. Dwayne, bring your son. Come sit up here. Just, just, can he stand? He's asleep. In Jesus' name. Hey, buddy. When he goes out, is he out for good? Hey, hey, I command you to be healed in Jesus' name. I break off the stronghold of sickness and disease. You foul spirit of sickness and disease. You power of hell and of death that would attack the very breath of life. Be healed in Jesus' name. Who has pain in your body? Would you stand with me if you have pain? Just come stand. I want you to come, come up here. Just stand. If you have pain in your body, any kind of pain, you can do it. Break the power of pain off of you. Boy, that's a whole lot of pain. Foul spirit of hell. People have normalized sickness and disease. It's not normal to me. It's death to me. Just a form of death. That's all it is. It's a form of death. If, it, if a disease ran, ran its full course in a person's body and because there was no immune response to it, it would result in death, a virus or bacteria. It's just death. Just. Zestal. Sate. Pain go in Jesus' name. Where's pain? What'd you do? I command this pain go in Jesus' name. Out! Pain goes. Where is it? Can you move it? Yeah. Now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the healing. Thank you for a complete restoration of all the ligaments and tissue and the bone. <laughs> See Paranas day. It's just typical. She boke around the set. He shall lie. Let us see at night. Kevin, look at me in Jesus' name and tell you the authority of the living God is yours to have. Speak the word of life, to speak that, speak with those same words and the same. Ability that Jesus Christ himself declared. These, these things are yours. They come to us directly by the Holy Ghost. Confidence and boldness, the yours. It's yours. This life is yours. Even having to work for Hewlett Packard, it's still yours.
And then you take hold of it in Jesus' name. You take hold of this. You take hold of this identity. You take hold of this light. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Come on, just stand by your husband. <laughs> Father, I thank you for the moving of your spirit. Father, I thank you for the grace. Father, I thank you for the work of your love and of your power in our lives. And Father, I thank you cause this light that you've lit in Kevin's life to begin to shine bright. Yes. Thank you, Father. It begins to shine. It begins to shine bright. It begins to shine. Hallelujah. It begins to shine. It begins to shine. In Jesus' name. Where's your pain? Right knee. What's wrong with your right knee? Well, you have authority over pain, Jesus' name. So just exercise it. Exercise your authority over pain right now. Well, just, just start moving the thing around. Just no pain. Sure. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 It's got to obey. Things got to be the way you say it. You declare it. Then you just, then you just go around. And you tell people to be healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, just keep letting them on, Jerry. Just get happy. Amen. Just let that joy flow right out of your belly. Let that, those, are the, those are the movings of God, the Holy Ghost. When God, the Holy Spirit, moves in the spirit of man, men get happy. Because they begin to feel the expression of God's life. And everything about God's life is fullness of joy. When the Spirit of the living God begins to move in people's lives and their spirit, they feel an overwhelming peace that passes understanding because that is the very nature and expression of that which God the Holy Ghost is feeling and imparts it to us. Same with His love. Hallelujah. Same with His healing. If you can yield to the joy, you can yield to the healing. If you can't yield to the joy, you probably can't hear yield to the healing either. Because it's a package. Just wave to the Lord. Just wave. Wave, he can see you. He, just wave, just wave. At, what's, what's wrong with you? Your neck? You have a pain in the neck? You have a pain in the neck? I said you don't. Hallelujah. I'm the moon to say. What's wrong with you? Huh? What's wrong with you? Huh? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Huh? What's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Why? Why do you have that? Why? I curse the thing off of you. I break the power of it off of you right now in Jesus' name. Do you know that lo the Father loves you? Huh? Are you secure in His love? Huh? Not really? But you're coming into that? Huh? Be healed. Be, hey, be healed. You know what? When I discover things that I lack in my life, 
You know what I've done? You know what I've done? I haven't felt bad about it. And then what am I going to do? When I discover there's things lacking in my life, I ask the Father. <laughs> in Jesus' name. To give that to me. To fill me with that. And then he does. Hallelujah. <laughs> he overwhelms me with an assurance that it's mine, even though maybe at the time I don't have really a way to qualify that 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 expression is there or that, that that event happened. But he fills me, he touches me with heaven. He touches me with his presence. The Lord says you ask you have not because you ask not. And then when you're asking, you're asking for something that you can consume in your own lust. It's about your own self-interest, you know. It's about earthly affections. So when we begin to say, When we begin to ask Father in Jesus' name in a realm of faith that He gives us, that we participate with and it gets stronger, oh my. We find that we really discover ourselves not to be self-made. I'm God-made. I'm God-made. Kingdom of God certified. <laughs> KGC stamped. I'm, I'm telling you right now. Bought with a price. Sealed with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is true. Because I'm God-made. I'm God made because everything I have need of, I ask him and he supplies all that I have need of. Because it's a faith realm. It's a faith realm that I've come to, I've come into because I've known and believed the love of God by interacting with him. He spends, he spends this great length of time convincing us of how much he loves us. And we participate with it. And in that realm, our faith gets so huge. We scare ourselves. We wake up in the morning scaring ourselves with what we're going to do in the kingdom of God. We, just, we, just, we have these de declarations that come out of our mouth, and then later on we're thinking, how are we ever going to pay for that? That's the trap. That's the trap. We have these declarations. Wow, where are we going to ever get that power? And see, we can quantify money in our minds and deal with the reality of how much we have or how much we don't have in a more real way than we quantify power, how much we have and how much we don't have. We just kind of leave that kind of out there and, you know, in the esoteric, non-quantifiable, hope-so realm. The Father would teach us to quantify it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Papa's going to teach you how to think beyond the realms of your own limitations. Everything you've done in life up to this point, everything that's been taught to you up to this point is for you to, how to for teach you how to think within the confines of what you are able to do. What you've received a certification to do. You can only do what you got certified to do. Approved by man to do. I got no approved by man stamp on me. I'm not going to get branded with that thing. Approved by man. No, sir. No, sir. Uh-uh. Papa comes to us. Father comes to us. The Spirit of Grace comes to us to liberate us into a realm now to begin to think beyond and to believe beyond and to expect beyond all the confines of our own human ability to begin in the, in the framework of setting our affections on things above. To out of that realm have that power and that authority that is there vested in Christ Jesus. That's now vested in us. And now we speak and it happens. You're going to start practicing that. I was with a couple of preachers the other day. And one of the of God preached pastor. been pastor for 40 years. And, and uh, an evangelist and that I've known for a long time. And I, I, I know I was just saying, you know, I was talking about my, about my uh, uh, plan to evangelize Saudi Arabia, Arabia Mecca, during Ramadan. And, uh, and I said, well, my plan is, uh, 
to be translated in. And so I'm, pra I'm practicing translation. And they're looking at me like, well, the one guy, he knew what I was talking about. He's like, here, here we go. We know what Mark's doing. But the other guy's going, the 40-year guy's 40-year pastor and soon as God is looking at me with such earnestness. You practice translation? I do. I do. I, I said, would you like me to show you how to practice translation, being translated from one place to the other? It's the only way you can do a missions plan in Saudi, make, make a Saudi Arabia on Ramadan. He said, yeah. And he was sincere. sincere. He said, yeah, I want to learn. I said, are you ready for a change in the atmosphere? I said, things are going to start changing. Ready for things to start changing the atmosphere? He's like, this sounds like this is going to be good. <laughs> I said, it is. Now, one the big part of that is the boldness and the confidence and the great assurance, the experience. I know that when I interact with God, the atmosphere changes. <laughs> I know, I know that these expressions of heaven begin to impact people around me. So uh, you know how, I, you know how I press. Some of you know how I practice translation, being translated. Same way I practice raising people from the dead. Same way I practice prophesying. Same way I practice word of knowledge. I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in, in the Spirit. Mm. Father wants us to give ourselves to this relationship and this interaction with the Holy Ghost. See, I don't believe that you can speak with other tongues unless the Holy Ghost give you utterance. I believe it's an, act, an acti activity of the Holy Spirit. It is a miracle realm. These miracles are these signs. There's really these miracles should follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. It's a divine interaction. There's a now the hindrance and I want you to stand I want you to come here and uh, listen Rebecca you know depression is a spirit it's not a state of, it's not something that, it's not something that, that is a, an emotional state that you have to live with. It's a spirit. It's an opposition against your life. You don't have to have it. You know what the cure for depression is? Joy. Yes. <laughs> and you know how you get it? You know how to receive joy? You ask. You 100%. So now that all you have to do is place this into practice. Melancholy and depression, a depressed state, has nothing to do with what God the Holy Ghost wants to express in your life. God, the Holy Spirit, is going to give Rebecca Graham a capacity to be able to think in the realms of a heavenly place. To think in a place that no longer is about doubt or concern or worry or fear not going to have a negative spin on it it's all going to be very positive it's all going to be very beautiful it's all going to be very wonderful god's going to god the holy spirit is going to teach you the depths of compassion so you just fall in love with everybody and want everybody around cram them all into one room and kiss them all at the same time kind of thing. i mean just that kind of love that kind of compassion that kind of caring father's going to fill you with such joy inexhaustible and inexpressible because that's what he's purposed and all you have to do is say okay i'm ready for this now you're going to, there's certain things you're going to have to resist. You're going, these things in battle are minds. They come, they take hold of us. They seize us. You've got to be around people 
who know how to model for you not be in, being impacted by the voices of the atmosphere. The Prince and the Power of the Ear has imp impressions, ideas, feelings, emotions that it tries to impose on us. We learn how to resist it and them and him, the satanic realm, with the authority of heaven. And it's called the faith. And, and the word is used steadfast. You know why? Because sometimes when it becomes a stronghold, we have to take a stand, and it's a fighting stand. that can't be moved. That's where God gives us what's called hypostasis. It's a firm footing so you can't get knocked down. The way you're standing right now, I could knock you down really easy. Huh? But I could teach you how to stand so that I wouldn't be able to push you down. Huh? I could actually teach you how to stand and move to where that when I came at you, that would push you down right now. You could actually throw me all down there about third, fourth row. Huh? So the Lord wants to teach you the same thing. He wants to teach you how to stand. He wants to teach you how to be steadfast. See, what happens is people begin to fight a good fight. They talk a good talk. They, man, they're, hoorah! You know, they're at it, right? <laughs> they're ready to take on the, the nations of the earth, all right? And then they get, in and then they get into the, 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 the intensity of it, right? And they're good for a, they're good for a little while. There's like, wait, I'm getting worn out here. I'm getting worn down. <laughs> I need I need a break. But what's the break? You, what are you gonna get in the break? You're gonna go back to the problem. So the break's not an the break's not an answer, is it? The breakthrough is the only answer, isn't it? <laughs> now this is what you gotta practice. <laughs> It is the nana. It can now say it to you. Comes out right from the same place. Right where the nana tate in a montani and tarani it to kissi nana de and then a makata nana comes from. That's where the that's where the joy, that's where the that's where the that's where the laughter comes from. <laughs> that's where the peace and the gladness comes from. That's where the, the you see, faith is far greater than positive. But you know one step towards faith? It's just getting positive. One of the ways that you can actually measure, one of the ways you can quantify whether or not you're walking in faith or whether you're walking in doubt is just how positive you are about things, how thankful you are, how good is every, everything's going good. So people call you up no matter what time of day. How are you doing? I'm so blessed. It's so amazing over here. Where are you at? In heaven. <laughs> I'm seated in a heavenly realm over here in Christ Jesus. This is good, and I'm not moving. <laughs> I found the spot, and I'm staying here. Just set your hands towards heaven. Anybody else that deals with melancholy and depression? Anyone else? You just, anyone else, you just lift your hands towards heaven. Yeah, baby. Kutakana ikse. Kutakana nekishi. Kukana makiki and anukutakanea. Sukona nakia kia kata. Bukina. Yeah. Powerful. Yes. To just hope, restore this hope. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, you Lord. Rearrange all of these yeah. things in your heart and your new thinking. Yeah. It's all coming around. God's got it right there for you. That's right. He's going to do it. just waiting for you to hope in him again. Put your trust in him again. Fully. More and abundantly than you could have ever thought or asked. He's got it waiting for you. Just believe him. Believe what he has. In right now, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. So you just begin to ask the Lord. You begin to say, Lord, I thank you for your joy. And then just, and I, I'm just going to drink of it right now. Chug a lug. Chug a lug a lug a. Chug a. Chug a chug a. Lug a lug a. 
<laughs> yeah. Huh? Uh-huh. And then every time you need to, every time you feel a little doubt and depressed, a little melancholy, a little sad, a little sorrow, a little disappointed, you say, Lord, you ask him, you say, Father, fill me with your joy and fill me with your confidence right now. You just ask him, say, Lord, fill me with your joy and fill me with your confidence right now. Yeah. And he, and that says, now you can say that you're, you're God made, not self made. But what happens, what happens is this, what happens if we feel discouraged and we feel disappointed, we feel like when well, things are just are the same as they've always been, it's not getting any better. How are we going to ever get to where we're supposed to be going? Then all you're doing is communing with unrighteousness, thought, unrighteous thoughts. You're communing with doubt. Faith won't grow there. Doubt grows there. But when you just begin to turn from all of that mess and say, I there's nothing I can do about it. And you lift up your hands like this and surrender. And when I lift up your hands, lifting up your hands is like the evening sacrifice. That means you're going to get burned up. You're going to get turned into smoke. You're going to go from one form into another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, Renaya, say. So just be filled right now. Filled. 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 God says faith and joy. Where do they come from? Holy Ghost. How do you receive? Ask. Now you know where, the, where it comes from and you know, you know how to get it. So you should never be without it. Now you foul spirit of depression. I break your stronghold now. I break your effect and your influence off of Rebecca's life. I come out against you in the name of Jesus. And I, I command you to lose your hold. I command you to stop your unholy influence. Now, the Lord says resist him steadfast in the faith. So you're going to have to deal with it too. Somebody say, well, it's just the way I feel. No. No. You, it's, if it's not God, you... It's not just the way you feel because you're supposed to be feeling what he feels. You're supposed to have what he has. Hallelujah. And so if it's not what God's ministering, you don't want it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That's it. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you is a good spout, a good place, a good spout where the glory comes out. That's it. Just keep doing that. Just stay there and just do that. Yeah, it keep getting better. With the more thank yous, the better it's going to get. Amen. I like that you just do that. Just don't even let up. Don't stop. I'll be back in a minute. Check on how you're doing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Huh? Are you doing well? You're doing delight. Are you delight? Are you doing delightful? Are you? <laughs> uh, how are you doing? How are you doing? Any pain in the neck? No. No. Don't go searching for it. Don't go searching for it. If it's a little, it's by and large just completely, totally gone. Might as well just call it all gone and move on. Huh? I mean, come on. How are you in here? Hallelujah. I mean, I mean, it's one thing to have faith and move in faith when it still feels stiff. It's another thing. Come, come on, you with me? When it's almost 100% gone, it's just released. It's a done deal. It's over. It's work good. I know you don't want to lie or anything. You're just trying to declare the truth, but I just want to teach you another realm of faith. Amen. See, Father says it's mine, so therefore I have it. I know I have eternal life because he said so. I, I have never looked in the book, but I know my name's written there because he said so. Now, when I got that for that, then I can easily have it for sickness and disease. Come on. Give me a break. Oh, come on now. Get your mind right. You know what I'm saying? Come on, get, 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 get a right perspective on things. Hallelujah. Because the faith, just faith, there's one faith that all works the same. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I have purpose that everybody that is around me will learn how to function and live in divine health. I have purposed it. Now, knowing that the only way that you're going to live in divine health is you've got to continue to live in the flow of the anointing. There's got to be a continual flow of the anointing, a, con a continuous event of the flow of the anointing in your life. I'm going to make sure, by the help and the grace of God, that everybody understands. You can't sit quietly and stoically and have a move of God. And no, that's a Buddhist. If you're a Buddhist, if you sit quietly and all stoic, you'd be right up to the top in the Buddhist community. In the Christian community, the Holy Ghost community, you on the bottom. You ain't even started moving yet. You ain't got nothing yet. Huh? Because God fill you with holy emotions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm glad, Father, I don't sit around all stoic all the time. Or any time, just stoic. The Lord Jesus wants, he wants to imitate him. He was anointed with joy above us. You want Jesus was how he was anointed? He has had more joy than anybody ever had. And I purpose to follow him, so I'm going to have what he has. I'm going to have more joy than anybody's got. Amen. Amen. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I wonder how that worked. It'd be, it'd be pretty cool if you could kind of do that anytime you wanted it. <laughs> just, just, just didn't come at random. Hey, what's wrong with you, little brother? You too, thanks. Uh, you been eating candy? <laughs> the wages of sin is a toothache. The wages of candy are carbohydrates. Huh? He said he had a toothache, not a throat ache. He said toothache. I command that toothache to go and throat ache too. Your grandmother says that you have a throat ache. You do? Well, just lift your hands right now. Say, in the name of Jesus, I command my body to obey the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your healing. Be healed. Be healed now in Jesus' name. No fever goes off of you and any effects of the fever infection goes off of you. Pain goes out of your mouth. In Jesus' name toothache goes start brushing your teeth how are you doing how are you doing you doing good father I want you to just baptize Josiah fresh in the Holy Ghost just baptize me overwhelm him that's beautiful what's up You have, you have pain in your lower back. Well, in Jesus' name, be healed. Be healed in your spirit, soul, body. Right now, in Jesus' name. Command the pain to go. Just reach down and touch your toes. Get on down there quickly. Back up and back down again. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the Lord loves you so much, Sandy. Did you know that? He loves you so much. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. Just wipes all this, he wipes all the pain away. Wipes all the shame away. He just loves us so much. It's an amazing God. What's wrong with you? Got a pain in the legs. Pain in your feet, in your legs. We'll be healed. Be healed in your spirit. Be healed in your soul. Be healed in your body. Be healed. Be healed. Jesus. 
Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed. Jesus Christ, the Savior, is here. He's also the healer, too. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, be healed. Takstikir in the must. Barastikistara. Barastikirisisht. You have pain in your leg, huh? You know, slay, slay, slaying is very dangerous, especially on thin snow. You're supposed to be in very thick snow to do that. It doesn't work in Southern California. We get a half of an inch of snow. <laughs> it's at the melting point. And people <laughs> Be healed. Be healed. Pango. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name. What's wrong with you? Cellulitis isn't anything that you want to have. But you know what? If you go to the doctors, they're going to find something seriously, terribly wrong with you so that they can pronounce something over you. In many cases, not every case. But when you go looking for a problem, I promise you, that will, you will discover one. Usually that's the way it works. Somebody's going to be there. If you visit enough doctors, they're going to find out. <laughs> I'll break that old curse off of you right now. Amen. Listen, there's only one way to deal with sickness and disease, and that is commanded to leave your body. Look, I, I, I'm telling you, I... I I'm not trying to describe something to you and declare something to you that I don't believe and that I don't practice. When sickness comes on my body or disease comes on my body or something goes, starts going wrong with my body, I begin to speak to it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I command it to obey the Word of God and I don't let up on it. The one, th the one way that the enemy gains a stronghold in our life to establish sickness or disease in our life is through fear. Oh, no, I've got cancer. Oh, no, I've got a tumor. Oh, no, I've got something going on with my central nervous system. Oh, no, you know. And then you go and you Google your symptoms. <laughs> and, then you, and then you diagnose yourself. And then you, pro, then you give yourself a prognosis. And you a prognosticator. Those aren't good in the Bible. If you read about those in Jeremiah, those aren't good. Prognosticators are right there with the sorcerers. Are you with me? I didn't even do that. Because Google's going to give you the worst answer you could have possibly ever done. I'm feeling dizzy. A little tingling in my fingers. You're about to have a stroke. Could have lost it. Fear sets in. You're like, in a panic, just dial 911. Tell the ambulance. Look, I just Googled this. <laughs> but unfortunately, what I found is that people's imagination is far worse than Google. <laughs> this is where the strongholds are at. But what happens if you begin to live a life where you're praying and you're saying, Lord, strengthen me in my body? stand against sickness and disease. That's my prayer. I share it with anyone and everyone. Strengthen me in my body to stand against sickness and disease. Strengthen me in my soul to love only you, to desire only holy emotions. Seek those pleasures that are at your right hand. Strengthen me in my spirit to stand against sin and iniquity. Lord, 
lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And that includes now. I actually started praying that prayer when, when I saw something come up on my body in several different locations that in every, in every description of what I know about melanoma, it fully suit, fit, the, fit the bill. And it started growing and expanding, and I cursed the thing, and it pulled off me. My body commanded it to die. You know, so I, I'm talking about engaging in real battles that we face and saying, no, I'm not having anything unless it's that which God has freely given. You know, you start getting, you start getting older and you can start having various different symptoms of things and then you can begin to deal with them and by, by medicating yourself, you even start going through transitions of, of the way that their body handles uh, sugar and the way they break down sugar and just various different transitions of life. And you don't have to have those. And women, you don't have to deal with the issues associated with, with uh, menopause, hot flashes and cold flashes. You don't know whether you're freezing or about to burn up. And, 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 and the beginning of it is that you, you, you can begin to deal with the way that hormones change in your body as a young woman. And you can deal with that. Men can deal with the same thing. You're not, your, your body's not mastered by your endocrine system. This is a shocking thing. This is a news flash that most people cannot believe, that your body is not controlled by your endocrine system. It's not. Well, it doesn't have to be. It can be ruled by your spirit. The body is dead without the spirit. So we just want you to take a hold of the life-giving flow that is in Jesus' name and start living a healthy life. We want you to live in, the, want you to live in divine health. Amen. 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 I don't sit around eating Twinkies and drinking Cokes, praising God for divine health either. <laughs> Amen. Huh? We don't do that. We don't violate things. Huh? Because that's just wrong. That's just sin. So lift your hands towards heaven. Let the, let the Lord touch you. You're doing pretty good for how old are you? 95? 85. 85. I'm just kidding. You're doing great for 85. You're doing great for 85. Are you happy? Are you happy? Are you happy? Father, we just ask you to make Jack happy. Make him happy, Lord. How are you doing? You have a rash all over. What was the rash from? Well, I know what's wrong. It's just stress and nerves and unrest in your spirit. You just break out in hives. So what we do, we whip ourselves into a serious frenzy through fear. And the Lord doesn't want us to live in fear. He wants us to live in love. Perfect love casts out fear, and he's got perfect love for you. Isn't that beautiful? No, he, just, he just loves you so much. He doesn't want you to be oppressed, and afflicted, tormented. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break off of you any unholy desires. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to tell you, you just listen to me. break off both those things off of your hand. In Jesus' name. In the name of the Most High God. Right now. This torment of the body and torment of the soul and the mind. Speak peace into your life. Command this rash to go. This fear to go. This addiction to go. No more. Are you going to give place to that thing? And just receive his love and his grace. He just loves you so much. The Lord never rejects. Did you know that men will reject you 
People will reject you. They'll, they'll have a different opinion of you. God will never reject you. He never changes his opinion towards you. And see, there's just not very, there's just very few models of that in this world because there's very few people who've learned righteousness. You see. But see, he's the model of righteousness. He never rejects. He gives people an opportunity in the space of time. And the time, ultimately, when that time runs out, then the th course is set where men have rejected him. But he never changed his mind about you. He never changed the disposition about you. The gifts and the calling of God will still always be there for you. Father won't lower his expectations. Just always there. This mantle's always there to pick up. Dorosti karamande she. Nembrusetai. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. Touch right now. Touch right now. Touch right now. Touch right now. Everybody just lift your hands towards heaven in this place. Just, just, let the glory of, just let the glory of the Lord Jesus fill you. He's got a glory for you. From the crown of your head, so as you feet, you belong to the living God in Jesus' name. I put the blood of Jesus Christ upon you. In the name of Jesus, I command you to be filled with the Spirit. Be filled. 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 Be filled right now. Be filled. Be filled in Jesus' name. Be filled up. Be filled up in Jesus' name. Be filled up in Jesus' name. Be filled up with the glory of heaven in Jesus' name. Father has a glory for you. Jesus said, the glory that Father has given to me, I've given it to you. Now, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm just going to receive what he's given. I'm not going to say, I don't, I'm not eating. <laughs> I, I'm going to receive what he's given. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to just receive right now. I want you to just receive right now. Let me just tell you right now, you the blessed people of God. Amen. Listen, I'm telling you right now, you the blessed people of God, that which God has blessed, who can curse? You the blessed people of God. You the blessed people of God, and all we're doing is trying to talk you into a greater dimension of the blessing being realized in your life. I said you blessed. You're blessed coming in, you're blessed going out, because God said you blessed. You're blessed in every dimension of your life, in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, because God said you're blessed. He said he's enriched you with everything that belongs to heaven. He says he's blessed you with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realm. My goodness gracious. My. We're just trying to talk everybody into being blessed. That's all we're doing. We're just trying to talk everybody into receiving more. I pray in Jesus' name that every one of you will be receive the name, receive more. Hallelujah. See more. Amen. Receive more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bye. Hashitoya. Harabura serene and Bodasaya. Hallelujah. Halamangaya. Halamangaya Seto. Hey, isn't it wonderful having Geneva minister? Amen. It is, isn't it? It is. It is, because she's going to go after a demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power. That's why. This is what we want for every one of you. We just want to model that for you. One, we model that for you. So did every one of you. We'll just live that way. Just say, yeah, I'm going to get every time you get up, every time you start ministering to anybody. You don't minister to anybody, just tell them about Jesus. You minister to them, tell them about Jesus in expectation of a demonstration of the power of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. A miracle. A miracle. You don't have to do much. Just stand there, just stand there talking the things of the Spirit with the expectation of signs, wonders, miracles, knowing. Because God moves in the realms of faith. And if you know he's poured out his spirit upon all flesh. And you can see the power of God coming upon someone. Uh, the Lord wants to teach you how to see the power of the Holy Ghost come upon someone. And you can say, hey, the Holy Ghost come upon you right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we want, just believe in God that you just have Holy Ghost meetings wherever you're at. Lunch room. Street corner. Pete's coffee. <laughs> Wherever it is, it's... 
Bon. So Rabba Basikiti at the Lord. So Koruman God, the Holy Spirit, wants you to allow Him to produce through your life. You listen to me. This goes for you up there. God wants you to allow Him to produce through your life a demonstration of His power. I want you to stand with me and just, just be willing to just receive instruction from God and to go do it. If you're, if you're out on the floor, then you need to get up. You don't want to. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus you get knocked down can't get up. Come, come. Benga a key. Oh, yeah, next. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I command these ears to open. I command these ears to open. To be able to hear properly Jesus name Jesus name thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus oh Rabbi Siki at your side thank you Lord Jesus Oh, blessed is your name, Lord. A little healing anointing of heaven's touching you right now. Sweet presence of Jesus. I love to be on both sides of healing anointing. It's function flow in the healing anointing. You'll stay healthy. Do that by laying your hands on the sick. If you're the one that's sick, lay your hands on your son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Well, that's praise God for that. I felt a little heat in my hand. In fact, I felt a lot of heat. The, the, the thing about it is, praise God for being able to feel things, but you know what? It really, His Word is the thing. Were you feeling anything or not? His Word is saying just that His Word does produce a feeling. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for courageous, confident, certainty, boldness. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me just let me say this to some of you before you go. Any in, does anyone in this place, if you're tormented with condemnation, once again, that is very akin to the depression and the melancholy. Those are things that Satan does to torment people's minds, to keep them back from the confidence and the boldness the Father would have us live in. You're going to have to take a stand against that and resist the devil steadfast in the faith. 
because those things are very persuasive, especially if you've allowed them to work in your life for a period of time. Don't, the, 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 the secret is just don't allow stuff to be ongoing. Get, deal with it as soon as it crops up. If it's unforgiveness, if it's an offense, if it's a, whatever problem it is, deal with it. Shut it down. And remember, submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to God. If you don't know how to submit yourself to the church and the authority in the church, you can never submit yourself to God. Ever. The level that you resist the anointing that comes through the ministers is an expression, actually, is a quantifiable expression of how you resist the anointing that comes directly from the Holy Ghost because there is no real difference. That's the way he ministers. That's the way he moves. And so what if there is a problem going on there where you've got something running interference, some, con, some kind of accusation, a spirit of accusation and criticism, whatever it, that is, you want to get at that thing. You want to be pointed with it. You want to come at it in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ and recognize that that's where your breakthrough is going to come. When you no longer are under the influence of an evil spirit trying to keep you back from the provision the Father has from you and the flow of the Holy Ghost. You have to, you're going to have to quit playing, playing around. And you understand me, you listen to me. You have to quit playing mind games and start recognizing that Father shines a floodlight on things and all you've got to do is pay attention. I was telling a friend of mine the other day, I said, I value everything I see and everything that I hear in everything that I think, it is a description to me of what's going on around me. And I hope that's not a news flash to anyone. Are you with me? We just respond at various levels of reaction based upon that perception that God has given us. Hearing, seeing, thinking. It just I put it in a different context. Is it of the Holy Ghost or is it of Satan? Is it of this world or is it of heaven? And I'm challenging you, if you want to grow and mature in the things of God, if you want to quit being tossed back and forth, up one month, down another month, up one week, down another week, if you want to stop that, you hold the key. Father's given you authority as a son, as a child of the living God, to say no to that thing. To say, I will not have the disposition. God wants to teach you to learn to, to walk in righteousness, to walk in the Spirit. You don't have to wonder what the Holy Ghost is doing. It's very clear. He's loving. He's blessing. He's interceding. He's joying. He's peacing. Amen. There is no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Then you just have to ask yourself, am I in Christ Jesus? And then the answer should be quickly, absolutely. Then guess what? This has nothing to do with what God is doing. Therefore, you foul spirit of hell, you get out of here right now. And if it's become a stronghold... You're going to have to deal with it on that level. A stronghold doesn't want to let go. A stronghold is a stronghold. It's got a strong grip on you. You try to jerk it away, and you can't jerk it away. God gives us power to pull down strongholds. Hallelujah. And we hook up with you, and we pray for you, because that's where we're able to be a help to your faith. We're able to move in the authority that God has given to minister the things of the Spirit so you can feel peace when, there's, when you just can't seem to find it and feel joy and experience joy when you can't seem to plug into it and have that thing's broken off of you. But if, here's two things. If, we, if that thing gets broken off of you, you're going to have to be willing to stand in the faith by which it was broken off and not allow it to return. You now have, it's not a stronghold, but it still is an th oppressive thing that's going to come at you that you're going to have to say no to in Jesus' name. Second thing. If you're not hooked up it, with the anointing in the house, then the flow can't come. Pipe's busted. <laughs> I love my wife. I get to live in a happy land now with her. Hallelujah. Pipe's busted, and we want to fix it in Jesus' name. Amen. So that the flow can come over to your house. Huh? <laughs> we ate it. We ate it. When the pipe's busted and you can't get water over your place. Huh? Don't you just hate it? Nothing works. Can't shower. Can't do nothing. All the, 
Uh, what you going to do? You're going to get right out there. You're going to fix that pipe yourself. Why did then would you leave the other work to someone else? But pastor, you just go ahead and fix pipe. I'll do that. I'll do that. But don't go out there and break the thing again. <laughs> Listen, the Lord wants you to stay hooked up. Hey, we love you, man. <laughs> we love you. We love you with the love of the Lord Jesus. We love you with the love of the Holy Ghost. This is the genuine love of the Holy Ghost, and we love you with it. Amen. Amen. And and who? Hallelujah. <laughs> ha. Papa's come to cause us to speak on your behalf. We're just happy to be here doing it. Amen. So find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Tell them that you love them. Bless them in Jesus' name. Tell them you're just so happy to be in happy land. Hallelujah. Right here in the glory land. There with the mighty host I stand. Hey, for Manny? What's wrong? He's got tumors. Okay, people. Okay, people, hold up. Just a minute. Give me a minute with me. Manny has tumors in his body again. He had a cancer that came into his life and and he was around a bunch of clinical scientists because his dad's a clinical scientist, a medical doctor, and insisted that he go through the whole regiments of cancer therapy. And now the tumors have come again. And it's a somewhat of an aggressive thing in the realms of death trying to destroy the body. And so... What we're going to do right now is we're going to break the stronghold of it. You foul spirit of death and cancer. We break your power. We break off your influence. In Jesus' name. Huh. Amen. Well, I just feel it. I could feel the de I could feel that death grip and that death power, and then I could just feel the thing release. Hallelujah! Praise God! Hallelujah! Praise God! Praise God! And Anna Lennon, Summer. That's what the Lord wants you guys to do. I just been hearing all night. Just. He just wants you to move in faith and confidence that you lay your hands on the sick and they're going to be healed. You just tell, you want to just tell people, you healed in Jesus' name. You just declare it. See, the gospel is a declaration. It's a proclamation of good news. Did you know that's really good news to somebody who's sick? You are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Raphael, you in the program too. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And thank you, Father. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, just go back to hugging each other. And don't forsake the offering. Worship the Lord with, with the offering. Go back to just loving all the people, prophesying over them. And worship the Lord with your tithes and with your offerings.